Bases were quickly consolidated under Russian military control. Russia annexed Crimea on Friday, less than a week after a referendum showed overwhelming support among Crimeans to secede from Ukraine and enter the Russian Federation. They took a lot of Ukraine's military with them. Ukraine's Deputy Army Chief of Staff confirmed that around 50% of the commanders of Ukrainian forces in Crimea have signed contracts to join the Russian military, though he insisted they would not provide the names. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. The National Security Archive, an organization founded to check rising government secrecy, has awarded its annual Rosemary Award to James Clapper for worst open government performance in 2013. Clapper was chosen for his now infamous lie to Senator Ron Wyden that the NSA does not collect information on millions of Americans. The Rosemary Award citation leads with what Clapper later called the least untruthful answer to congressional questions about the secret bulk collection of Americans' phone call data. It further cites other Clapper claims later proved false, such as his 2012 statement that we don't hold data on U.S. citizens. A press release from the archive explains the Rosemary Award, which is bestowed annually to highlight the lowlights of government secrecy, has recognized a rogues gallery of open government scoff laws, including the CIA, Treasury Department, the Air Force, the FBI, the Federal Chief Information Officers Council, and the career Rosemary leader, the Justice Department, for the last two years. In addition to Clapper, the archive also recognizes NSA Chief Keith Alexander, former FBI Director Robert Mueller, the Justice Department, and President Obama for what you might call dishonorable mentions. Essentially, their inclusion is based on successive lies told to the American people about the surveillance programs revealed by Edward Snowden. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Well, it's the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. Today, Pennington's black part of town moved across the river to North Pennington. The Thompson family sold their home on the east side and moved to the old Kirkland Place at 17 Mansfield Place, establishing the all-new black neighborhood. North side residents are looking forward to the infusion of fun and funk that the new black part of town is sure to bring to their area. Mayor Mitzi Kranowitz presided over the dedication of the new black neighborhood, unveiling a sign designating it a land. Mark District. And it's lovely, everyone. Pennington's diversity is its strength, whether it's Little Harlem or the so called gayborhood where Paul and his partner Bryant have that cottage. Sheriff Stevens today announced that the heavy round the clock patrols that helped make the old Thompson house one of the safest neighborhoods in town will move with them. This has nothing to do with the black part of town moving here. We just want to make sure that everyone here has a comfortable place to live. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want right here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you in the studio tonight, Ian here. And Johnny Ray. So, of course, you can take control of the airwaves. You can also join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So feel free to reach out to us in that way. There's pretty big news coming out of Colorado in regards to people who are currently sitting in jail cells and prison cells, people who've been convicted of marijuana-related so-called crimes. Big news, you say? I think it's pretty big news. We can talk about that here in a little bit. Plus, Johnny Ray's Game of the Week coming up later on tonight. Yeah, but it's orc-themed. Orc-themed. I know nothing about it except you told me it's a card game. That's all that I know so far. Right. It's. Uh, no, it's... Up, up. We'll find out more later. Johnny Ray's Game of the Week on the way tonight. Plus... Virtual reality apparently is coming back, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. I, apparently, you already knew about it, Johnny Ray, but I just found out about it today. We'll tell you more about that and how Facebook is getting involved in it, which seems kind of creepy. 
Also, the IRS and Bitcoin. We're going to open with that. But first, your calls. We're actually going to start out with AC calling from Ohio, listening online. AC, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Johnny Ray. Yeah, um, over the last uh, couple of weeks, you guys have you guys have this guy kept calling in, this guy named Wit, who keeps calling in to defend the nuking of Japan, which I find to be one of the most disturbing things ever. I agree, and, and it's I, disturbing that he also claims that he's a libertarian at the same time uh, as yeah. supporting the nuking and destruction of innocent life. It's horrifying. I, I haven't heard this. What? Uh, what? He's what called on he the say? weekends. He's called on uh, like the last two Saturday shows, and I think Mark said he called on a Sunday at one point. Um, he calls he right yesterday up, too. Oh, did he? Okay, well, he calls right up toward yeah, the end was, of the show. He, yeah, he was bashing Muslims apparently that time. Wow, I don't even um, remember that. And I was on the show yesterday. Are you it, sure you talk? Are you sure you don't mean uh, Sunday? Yeah, it was, it was. Yeah, it was Sunday. Yeah, that's it. Okay, got it. Yeah, definitely doesn't sound like uh, a libertarian that I would want to spend any time with. That's for sure. So, I mean, th- there's a couple things. You know, if that guy was, if he's still listening, or anyone out there was listening, I'd like to say a couple things. Like, right, now, you talked about how, like, well, the evil empire of Japan was doing all sorts of bad things. So that means nuking them was correct because those two cities. Uh, the two cities that were nuked were full of people who were working in factories producing material that the Japanese Empire was using to commit all their horrible atrocities. And I like to say, what about the evil empire of the uh, United States federal government that's doing all sorts of tor- terrible things with its military all over in the Middle East, and not to mention the, the, the police here who are hurting all sorts of innocent people? And uh, what if, if, if uh, I don't know, like, what country is it that's got nukes, like, I think, like, Iran or something? What if they say, we're sick of this crap, so we're going to... We're going to drop a couple nukes in uh in, in huge cities where they're where the United States government's manufacturing their stuff, and uh, see how that is. I mean, you think that'd be okay with by his standards? That's a great question, and hopefully uh, one of us will remember to bring that up if he ever calls back. Although I hope that we we'll never hear from him again personally, because I don't. Even though I uh, I don't mind people calling in with differing viewpoints, there's certain ones that are absolutely sickening to me, and someone who would support destroying innocent life like that just because of what some politicians have done is and i think you really point out that how would he feel about his uh grandparents or his parents or his daughter or son uh having their life exterminated because of what the politicians here have done i think that uh, that's a great point i think a lot of people also um well, this is bringing something else to my mind. A lot of people attack a lot of adherents to the state attack libertarians because they say that the the free market would would turn into some crazy arms race. Hmm. That and, doesn't make much sense. Yeah, it's it's in the crazy world of governments where people aren't held accountable that you you even have weapons like like these nukes that could kill mankind. Well, right, and I mean to the point that or the claim that the free market without having you know this got these mind, monolithic states around to actually develop these weapons doesn't mean there wouldn't be weapons in the free market but i don't see an arms race i certainly don't see private companies fighting physically with one another uh, in the streets and killing each other because that's just not economically feasible the a, you know, a private company, for instance, doesn't have the ability to just print out its own money and force people to accept it, unlike the state, which uses the money printing press as their tool number one to go to war. That's how they fund the war, is they're able to print the money, not because people are voluntarily handing it over to support an effort that they think is a good idea. AC, any other thoughts you want to share tonight? Yeah, another thing I'd like to, you know, if it's something that would be interesting to ask with more people like him is, um, you know, there are Japanese Americans alive today who are here, who were there when the nuking of Japan happened, who probably had family over there who were killed by those nukes. I'd like to know if you'd like to talk to them and see how they feel about it. I mean, it's bad enough the American government threw them into concentration camps mm-hmm. during World War II, but now talking adding insult to injury, we're going to nuke a couple and kill some of your family. How's that sound? I mean, that's just, I wonder how you'd feel if you sat now and talked to one of those people. Great point, AC. Thank you for sharing your thoughts tonight. Appreciate the compassionate viewpoint, and uh, thanks for making it. Uh, that call at 855-450-FREE. It's a toll-free number. You may uh, get into the discussion about whatever's on your mind here. 855-450-FREE. And AC had obviously been thinking about that for a couple of days because you know he called on Sunday, and it's been a couple of weeks now since his, his original call. Uh, war, not a cool thing. I understand that you know the, the old excuse is that, well— 
it's war, you know, innocent people die, you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet. There's always these excuses around murdering people. And it was a different uh, world back then in the 40s. The communication that we have and the ability to see images from across the world as they're happening didn't exist then, so people could get away with a lot more. That's certainly true. There was a news bit today that I didn't read about the My Lai massacre in Vietnam, which was a the U.S. Army slaughtering a village in Vietnam. Mm. And in fact, there was there was this. It, he was a lone gunman, and I can't remember his name, but uh, surely you remember Ian, the man in Afghanistan who went out at night with uh, probably a rifle and a pistol and just started murdering um, families People, in their yeah. homes. I heard about that. Yeah, so that still happens today, and I, I, I just can't imagine how horrific that me lie thing was. And and that's I, just one of many incidents, right? I mean, I'm sure there were plenty of others that weren't necessarily reported as widely. Yeah, and of course the, the thousands incinerated by nuclear weapons. Share your thoughts if you'd like, 855-450-FREE. So I'd like to see a world where we don't have war anymore, and I'm not of the belief that... Uh, that, that not having the state around is going to end human conflict, but it certainly would be a big step in the right direction. It's ludicrous to imagine Walmart, the most evil of, of the corporations, <laughs> uh, uh, duking it out in the streets with rifles against their competitors. No, and while there certainly would be in a free market that many liberty-minded people would like to see, while there certainly would be protection agencies, which would probably have some level of arms to protect the their clients, to protect you, presuming you hired them for their services, it's not in their interest to go into a war. They just want to defend. The, uh, the most economic thing to do is to defend your customers, not to aggress, not to... Uh, to retaliate, not to continue on, because it's very, very costly. If you go, let's say there is this theoretical, you know, Bill Gates who's got all this money and he wants to just start killing people. Well, he's going to be running up against somebody who's got their defense company who, or their defense organization or a militia or whoever. They're going to run up against a group of armed people that are going to fight back. And as soon as that happens, the people, some people are going to, uh, the Bill Gates, the evil Bill Gates side is going to take some losses and he's going to have to start paying more if he wants to hire some mercs to replace the people who've, uh, who've been killed because those guys are going to know they're going into a battle situation and they're going to charge more and it's going to get more and more costly over time. Uh, that's just not, uh, people don't have the incentive to do that unless they can just have an unlimited supply of money from which they can pull, which is what the government has. They have the ability, the unique ability to print money out and force people to accept it. God, businesses don't do that. Yeah. And they sell they us on the that. idea that, that, um, a limitless money supply and, and technocratic managers will give us economic prosperity, but it, there's trouble out there now. Plus, as uh, Bitcoin takes more hold, uh, it'll be even more difficult for the government money to compete. 855 450 free, and you can't print Bitcoin. You can't just make your own Bitcoin. 855 450 free, you can take control here on Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know what can you buy with Bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. 
Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited to take control of the airwaves here, and the toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The IRS has made some kind of announcement about Bitcoins, and a lot of people are freaking out, apparently, online. We will uh, share that with you and get your thoughts. Uh, 855-450 freeze the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is LRN.FM. And speaking of Bitcoin, uh, you can go and get yourself a Bitcoin wallet today. You don't have to ask anybody's permission. You just go to blockchain.info. Don't need to tell anyone you did it either. Just go to blockchain.info and you get a free Bitcoin wallet there. Plus, the reason why blockchain.info's wallet is the best online wallet you can find and still around, there's been a lot of online wallet systems that have come and gone over the last couple of years. Blockchain's still going strong. In fact, they've got over a million wallets that have been created through their website. Uh, it's really great because the encryption, they actually encrypt your wallet and the encryption and decryption is done in your browser. So when the wallet's, uh, you know, in their system, the wallet is encrypted. They don't have access to your wallet. They don't have access to the, the Bitcoins in there, and neither does the FBI, the IRS, or the NSA. So that's I, useful. It, it sure is. I started with blockchain, and I expect I'll be uh, a have a relationship with them from now to eternity. Hopefully so. They are, uh, seems like a solid company. They're still going strong. And uh, we got our friend George Mandrick, who used to cook baklava for people here in the Keene area who works for him. And he seems to be happy with them. So I think that's a good sign. Blockchain.info. You can go there and get your Bitcoin wallet for free tonight. Uh, so let's go to the phones and the fun. Your calls and thoughts. We've got Justin listening in Iowa. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Johnny Ray. Hello, Justin. 
Justin. Hello, Ian and hey. Johnny Ray. Thank, hey, welcome, thank sir. Thank you for taking my call. Go ahead. What's on your mind tonight? Hey. Yeah, well, I just wanted to get your thoughts, kind of, uh, your analysis uh, regarding um, Obama's comments today, I guess, in the Netherlands, that he's concerned with, uh, quote, a nuclear weapon uh, being detonated or going off in Manhattan. Uh, so I hadn't heard. I mean, I saw the headline, but I had not actually, obviously, spent any time listening yeah, he, to that he, speech. He was saying that Putin is not. He was uh, a reporter had asked him, "Do you regret denying Mitt Romney's assertion that Russia was a was an enemy, a credible enemy on the world stage?" And Obama said that 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 Putin was a regional power, and his actions were taken out of fear, not confidence. And that uh, President Obama was more concerned with a nuclear weapon going off in Manhattan. What and I guess he was talking he, about terrorists. Yeah, I was going to say, what does that mean going off? Uh, so not someone shooting a nuke at Manhattan, but is this like the old suitcase nuke thing, this fear, fear-mongering conspiracy theory? I presume so. What do you think, Justin? Well, yeah, I would, I would suggest that, you know, when the government does it, it's not conspiracy theory. And that, that was kind of my point uh, before I, I called before about, you know, the definition of the term conspiracy theory. And it's, it seems to be, you know, applied in a one sided way when the government does it. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's just sober analysis or whatever. Again. Well, I don't know what you're referring to, but as far yeah, as I'm the concerned, conspiracy? A, as far as I'm concerned, a conspiracy is whenever you have two people uh, conspiring in secret to do something that's usually bad. So that can certainly apply to government. Does it have to be in secret? I don't know. I don't know where yep. you get that from. Yeah, that's kind of the definition of a conspiracy: is that you're doing it, uh, you're, you're plotting things in secret, you're plotting evil doings uh, with at least one other person in in secret. Now, Justin, are you alluding to a false flag nuclear event in uh, in Manhattan? Are you suggesting would, that I he's uh, telegraphing some some move that? The U.S. government is gonna is gonna blow up Manhattan. Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't be alluding to anything, but I would suggest you know uh, if, if something of that uh, magnitude happened in our world, it bears investigating. Uh, you know, uh, exhaustive investigation. I mean, now, do you, you want the government? You don't want the don't government know. to do an investigation on itself, right? Because that usually doesn't work out very well. Well, right. I mean, I'm not suggesting that either. But yeah. I think it's pretty naive to say, oh, you know, if something bad happens, well, we're just going to take the government's word for it. I agree oh, I totally 100%. agree. Why would anybody take the government's word for something? Well, you'd have to be a real dupe. Well, the the problem with having governments is that if they if something like that were to happen and they were to investigate, I would have really no idea whether to believe them or or not. I There's generally no, won't believe them. I mean, if they, they if, wouldn't tell you the truth if they had right. something to do with it, so their reports have no value whatsoever. Absolutely, they're just PR. Yeah. Ultimately, and of course, most of the mainstream media will report whatever the government reports as though it's a fact. But uh, to me, if it's a politician or a bureaucrat saying something, then they generally should be disbelieved. One of my favorite uh, podcasters, Russ Roberts, was talking about a Russian friend of his, and the the Russian said the the, the crazy thing about Americans was they believed what they heard mm. on the news, and in Russia, you knew that that it was quite the opposite. Any other thoughts you want to share tonight, Justin? Well, you know, again, I, I'm just trying to understand what is what is the message here? Is it just fear mongering? The message know? with the the nuke thing Every, in, in Manhattan, you mean? Right. The, what is? I the, mean, do these people do these people make these comments not knowing, you know, that they're they're uh, rate, you know, upping the fear level? I mean, of course they know that. Oh yeah, it definitely sounds like fear mongering. Of course, the government wants you to be afraid. That way, you'll think that you need them. I mean, you don't think that, but the average person, uh, they want to believe the government is protecting them, and they also, at the same time, the government people know that if they don't stoke fear that people will become less and less inclined to look to them for safety. So it's part of their job to make people as afraid as they possibly can. I thank you for the call, Justin. Appreciate hearing from you at 855-450-FREE. Ian, I thought of a scenario regarding this this uh, Ukraine thing the other day wherein Obama and Putin were like, 
professional wrestlers. And, you know, for the for the world, they were showing their animosity towards each other. Mm -hmm. But really, they were both working towards their towards shared the goals. Goal. Yeah. And they were and they were having dinner together after the show was over. And, you know, I really I guess I don't think that's what what's happening, but. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it turned out that, that it was. Professional wrestling is so much more fun to watch, though. I mean, politicians are boring. I mean, they just drone on and on and on, and they're they're not as uh, as spirited, I guess, as a, as a pro wrestler. You know, pro wrestlers are <laughs> shouting usually, and they're hulking and intimidating, and there's usually some good writing behind that. Yeah, the president in Idiocracy was a professional wrestler, wasn't it's he? It's true, yeah. Terry, well, he was. I think he was t played by Terry Crews, but yeah, that was a great movie. I highly recommend uh, that film if you haven't seen it. And what was his name? Burrito Supreme? Beef no, Supreme? No, that wasn't it at all. Okay. Camacho. President Camacho right. was his name. <laughs> now, that guy was entertaining. Uh, in fact, uh, Jesse Ventura, I've heard rumors, might be running for president. I don't know if it's true. I wouldn't be surprised. And that would be pretty entertaining. 855 450 free. He's not really a libertarian, though. 855 450 3733. That's a conspiracy a nut. You know, he was doing that conspiracy TV show um, a little while back, but I guess he's doing something else now. He's doing an internet series, and I guess he's gotten away from the conspiracy thing. Okay. I don't know. Who knows what he really believes? I mean, he might have just been doing the conspiracy thing for a paycheck. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts on whatever's on your mind. It's Free Talk Live. Self reliance. Survival supplies. Survival skills. National experts. Get it all at the only free to attend national event exclusively for preppers. This spring in Tulsa, it's the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, a must be there event. Presented by American Living. This massive expo will include special guests David Mays from Nat Geo's Doomsday Preppers, plus GCN Zone Dr. Joel Wallach via live video conference. Hear Dr. Bones, Nurse Amy, and members of the American Prepper Network. Work, along with many other leading national experts. Learn life-saving tips, CPR, how to handle crisis situations, walk through a bomb shelter, and much, much more. Two big days, April 5th and 6th at the Tulsa Expo Square in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's April 5th and 6th. Doors open at 9 a.m. with absolutely free admission. Don't miss the National Preppers and Survivalist Expo, America's largest emergency preparedness event. Get your free tickets now. NPSExpo.com. That's NPSExpo.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Are you making sense to the 
boomer mindset. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com. 80 million baby boomers comprise 25% of the population and control most of the USA's wealth. As aging parents pass on, they'll control more. Boomers are 46 to 65 years old and regard themselves as midlife. They identify as neither young nor old. They're post minivan and pre retirement, and they don't like being called boomers. They think me. Many of the purchases boomer couples make are individual purposes. They've been experimenters all their lives. If you want their attention, Tell stories and keep it simple. If something seems complicated, boomers can dismiss it as, I don't need this. And if you're looking for work, you may be applying to a boomer, so relate accordingly. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live, take control of the airwaves right here. Toll free numbers, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online at freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you on the site. News updates, we will send them to you. In fact, the Free Talk Live Weekly Digest went out very recently. It's a new thing that we're doing on our news updates list. For those of you on the email list, if you're not on the email list, you can get on it by going to news.freetalklive.com. There's a sign-up box there. You can also connect to our Facebook, Twitter, Google+, but you only get the weekly digest in our uh, if you're on our email list. And that is essentially a summary of the most popular stories from the last week as voted and submitted by listeners like you to our website, as well as some more newsy kind of information about Free Talk Live. So you can go and get signed up for that. Plus, you'll get updates as they happen, important news about the show. Go to news.freetalklive.com. Will new technologies enslave mankind or liberate us? Liberate. It depends on who has the better ideas. In the book Quantum Vive, Volume 2, Murphy, our favorite mad scientist and his hard-drinking sidekick, continue their epic mission to open a vast new frontier for humankind. As they navigate complex political and corporate intrigues on a terraformed Mars in a colonized Vesta, dark forces are plotting to steal, murder, and start an interplanetary war. Whose tech will overcome? Whose ideas will win the day? Quantum Vibe is a popular liberty-themed sci-fi adventure webcomic, which updates daily for free. You can go read it right now at BigHeadPress.com. And their latest printed volume with 161 full-color pages. These things are nice, by the way. I was sent a couple of them by Scott Beezer from Big Head Press when I was in jail. Very, very nice reading. Uh, It's available uh, for you to purchase at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and direct from the publisher at BigHeadPress.com. And if you like to shop over at Amazon, don't forget that you can use our... Uh, the Free Talk Live store link. You can go to our affiliate links at shop.freetalklive.com. There are Amazon links there for Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. You just click into the right one for you and then order your favorite Big Head Press books through Amazon and Free Talk Live gets a cut. So that way Big Head Press gets a cut, Amazon gets a cut, and Free Talk Live gets a cut. And you get a great comic. So go to amazon.com or rather go through shop.freetalklive.com. BigHeadPress.com with Quantum Vibe. Go and check out the comic for free online and uh, order it for yourself. Order it as a gift. Be a great gift for somebody maybe in the, of the younger persuasion or somebody who's into comics that you might want to turn on to the ideas of freedom as well. So Quantum Vibe Volume 2 is now available in printed form. BigHeadPress.com. Let's go to James. He's in... Uh, I'm not real sure where KT is. <laughs> where are you, uh, James, in the world? Kentucky. Kentucky. Ah, very good. How y'all doing? Hey, doing what's on your mind tonight? Oh, I'm. Uh, I was listening a while ago, and y'all was talking about that conspiracy theory about a bomb going off in uh, New York. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me none because nine eleven happened there, and uh, you know people say the government was behind it too, and all that, and they, you know, and. Uh, I hope, I hope, I just pray we're not, uh, but we're in the end t- days, I believe. Oh, really? You're one of those? Uh, yeah, I've always been one of those. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So tell me about that. So you think that uh, that Obama's proclamation about nukes in Manhattan has something to do with uh, with the end days? Well, I, well uh, 
the way it says in the Bible, it does. Uh, it says the city will, uh, the great city will burn, and uh, they stand mm-hmm. off afar in the, uh, in the, you know, off the shore and watch the uh, city burn. I watched a movie about that too. Now, it's what, like, have you ever watched these movies and something happens yes. and it, and it comes to the past? You know what I'm talking about? And it comes to what? It comes to past, like you you watch a movie yeah, and like some... these burning buildings, two buildings, like nine eleven. Mm. I've seen this in at night at about ninety uh, in the nineties. Now, why would you think and, that? And it uh, was in Manhattan. No, okay, so Jamie, why would you? And by the way, this is Jamie told you so, longtime caller of Free Talk Live. We don't we don't hear from him that often, but it's it's interesting to follow up with him and, and learn a little bit more. Now, Jamie, uh, why would you decide that New York was the big city that that's referenced in the well, the end times? Uh, well, uh, there, there, uh, hey, there's also something else leading into it about the Wall Street's going to stocks going to fall and stuff. Well, it's really going to fall if uh, New York City gets hit with a nuclear weapon, ain't it? Well, and and yeah, want, I guess that would be a, so. Now, but wait a minute. A just just currency. think for just a moment here, Jamie. I mean, I'm looking here, according to Wikipedia, at a list of cities by population, and New York isn't even in the top 20. What's going yeah. on back there, Jamie? What? Who is that? Is that, is that, your, is that your mom? Who's that? Somebody yelling yeah. at you back there? Jamie? Oh, oh I was going to say, you can't be talking. To, he hung up. Uh, that movie, on. that Russell Crowe movie, Virtuosity, it had the Matrix in it, and then the Matrix came in the future. I don't recall. I don't know what. Vir- oh wait, was that where Russell Crowe was like some sort of bad guy in a, vi- a video he was in game? In the Matrix. In that, the Matrix. Yeah. So that kind of showed me the future, a taste of the future. <laughs> so I'm certainly not a subscriber to the whole end times theory. I would have liked to have heard more about what Jamie told you. So thought about. The uh, supposed end times, but maybe, maybe I don't know. That sounded like somebody was getting in a fight with him in the background. He's kind of living in a tough situation down there in Kentucky, or so he claims. There's always been a question about whether or not Jamie Tojaso is a real, a real person, or maybe, he's just maybe made up character. Yeah, maybe the rapture was happening, and you and and you and me are a couple of sinners, so we so just don't got, know about it. Yeah, he got sucked up into the uh, the sky or whatever happens to people that are raptured. <sighs> mm-hmm. Toll free number here eight fifty five four fifty free. If you want to. I don't know, agree with Jamie and tell us more about the end times. Because people people have been saying it's the end times for, I don't know, as long as I've been alive. And many, many years before that, probably, what, around every turn of this, the, the century, somebody's always saying it's the end times. And it's a good way to motivate people. It doesn't to, ever work out. Well, yeah, to, to what? To give them, to have to them anything, give you money? Anything. <laughs> the world's coming to an end. We've got, you know, a limited time. This what you're doing is meaningless, but I have a great mission for you. Buy a car now. Come to New Hampshire and build the libertarian free state. You might as well, whether it's uh, the world ending or not. Our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. So whether you want to talk about fear-mongering, about nuclear weapons, or whatever's on your mind, you may do that. IRS news, which normally I don't really care about, but it was all over social networking this afternoon uh, because a lot of the people that I'm networked with are in the Bitcoin community, right? As are you, Johnny Ray. In fact, you brought this story in to discuss tonight. Uh, it was also the number two story at FreeTalkLive.com, as submitted by M Millis Forty Two. So thanks to listeners like you for going and submitting content to our website, so we can be aware of stuff like this. Here's the story from CNN Money. The IRS has issued a formal notice saying it can tax Bitcoin transactions, calling it a property, not a currency. I have to imagine that the IRS issuing formal proclamations about Bitcoin at any time is not something that they ever wanted to do. I, I see this as a as something that they feel like they have to do. I'm I'm preempting you. Please continue. No, why do you? I mean, why do you feel that way? Why well, wouldn't I they don't... want to issue rules? I mean, they want people to follow rules and pay fees and fines and things like that. Because I don't think that they want to recognize it in any way. I don't think that they. Mm. I think that Bitcoin spells the end of the of of the Federal Reserve, really. And I don't see them uh, them wanting to recognize it in any way to give it any kind of boost in publicity. Yeah. Well, I guess I can see where you're coming from on that, but it's one of those things that it's so uh, it's so there, it's so out there that it has to be acknowledged. And in this case, if they do it like they're they're doing here, they can just simply uh, try to make it less relevant by regulating it out of existence. 
And that's, I think, what they're trying to do here. The story from, again, CNN Money is that they're calling it a property, not a currency, which is sort of interesting because there's other government agencies. I think it was a court, some government judge, and then FinCEN, of course, which is another federal government agency. They certainly consider it to be a currency. So, and I think Mark pointed this out on our Facebook and Twitter feed before the show. So which is it? Is it a currency or is it a property? Or can't both things be the same thing? Can't you have currency be property? Oh, wait. No, we're talking about not English. We're talking about legalese. We're talking about words that government bureaucrats and politicians and lawyers get to define as meaning things that are different than what they might normally mean to people. So we'll talk about this ruling by the IRS and whether or not it's actually going to mean something. We'd love to hear from you as well whether or not it's going to affect your use of Bitcoin. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere. Anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk free trial. Get the No No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Free Talk Live. You guys live in a dream world. No, sir, you're the one that lives in a dream world. You're the one that wants to have a police state in America where you get to determine who can come in and who can't. You want to have you border want to patrols. You want to have checkpoints. You want to let the entire third world into this country? Sir, let me get, let, I'll answer that question by reading a short excerpt from a poem. Maybe you've heard of it. It happens to appear at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. It was about... Yes, you're poor, you're tired, tired, huddled masses. Right, you are you aware of it, yes. come in legally, legally. Well, no, come on, the legally, <laughs> Lou. The legal is such a cop-out. No, hold on a second, legal. because when your ancestors came across, and I don't know what they are, let's say they're Italian. When your ancestors came across, all they did was take you to Ellis Island, screw up your last name, sit you around for three days, and then bam, you're out the door. Now legal is a huge pile of paperwork and tens of thousands of dollars. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
Have you ever wanted to help a hardworking person get their business off the ground? Then join me in enjoying some BuzzBox coffee. Let's make a difference, one cup at a time. Join us in helping people buy their own coffee farms through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Free Talk Live coffee drinkers will truly change lives forever. To get the best coffee you've ever tasted, it's organic, shade-grown, and top 1% Arabica grade. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's free, just cover shipping. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live here to take your calls about whatever you want. You may dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype in at username lrn.fm. You do have to send a contact request first before you can officially Skype the show, but it only takes you a moment to do that. It will be approved, and it'll be easy for you to connect with us from that point forward. With you tonight, Ian here. And Johnny Ray. And our number again, 855-450-FREE. Let's jump right into your phone calls and thoughts. We'll talk more about the IRS and their decision about Bitcoin and what, if, if anything, that it means. Victor, first, though, in Chattanooga, you're on Free Talk Live listening online. Hey, Victor. Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call. No problem. Uh, I do like uh, Bitcoin. Yes. Uh, just because it is uh, completely, uh, you know, uh, just no one can uh, do anything about it. Yes. It is what it is. The state cannot and, and touch is, Bitcoin. They I mean, want to regulate it, but it. it's a tough job. Yeah, right. Well, but uh, I don't believe it can be done. No. But uh, we'll see what happens. No, all they can do, I mean, all they can do is hope that people will be obedient and report on themselves. Accurately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I obediently report to uh, tell uh, the government how much I make and, uh, you know, how much I should uh, give them in uh taxes and that is just you know how i no i don't no yeah Apparently, exactly. i don't do that hopefully most people will uh, in the bitcoin world will be like you and i and basically completely ignore the irs on this but we can talk more about that here in a moment what yeah. else was on your mind tonight oh well uh, uh, one of the things i had on my mind is that i was trying to think about how that uh, we can uh help uh you know, show other people and just uh, 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 send a message. And one of the things that I have a problem with is that I would like to have a, a radio show like that you have. Mm. And but uh, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to to uh, do all the uh, you know e- everything. Maybe you guys could put out a uh, a thing that just said, "Hey, look." Here is the uh, here is how you can do it. Well, sure. Uh, every you know, now and then we get a question. Do uh, it, and I think that would be a great thing. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, uh, let me uh, let me give you the summary here. Uh, every now and then we get a question from somebody like, well, "How do I start my own radio show?" or "How do I start my own podcast?" Um, and I remember there was like a 13 year old boy who called in, uh, a young man who uh, called in re- once, and you know he was also very curious about this. In fact, he'd already started doing his own uh, podcast. So, yeah, it certainly helps if you have the technical ability to be able to put together a mixer and a microphone and plug it all into your computer and and make that work. That way you don't have to hire someone to do all that stuff for you. The, the, The fewer costs that you can incur at the front end of doing your own radio program, the the better off you are, the more likely you're going to keep going if you're not having to pay 200 bucks a week or something like that. Uh, so. So, Victor, I guess the question is, are you interested in being on the radio waves? Are you interested in being heard on the Internet, all of the above? Yeah, all, all, all the above. And, and I believe that, uh, you know, the cheapest way possible. You know, I mean, I am uh, just the average, uh, average citizen. And I, I would just like to uh, make sure that, uh, I mean, uh, there are a lot of people out here that uh, – want to uh, spread a message 
So, you know, I, I want to guess what, what advice you're going to give. Okay, Johnny Ray. I'm going to guess that you're going to suggest getting some kind of Shoutcast account and a microphone and a PC and recording your own live internet stream. Well, that wouldn't get him on the well, radio. That would he be wants... a great way to start it, but I don't yeah. know how to do it. I right. mean, I am, uh, I'm 50 years old. Yep. I don't know exactly how to do it. I mean, I'm not a, a tech a uh, savvy person. That's going to hurt you. Uh, it's going to hurt you. I mean, it, it may be worth the time to learn that stuff because otherwise you're going to have to hire somebody. You're going to have to hire a producer who can put together the tech side of things for you. And I don't know what that's going to cost. You're going to have to pay that person either by the job or by the hour. And uh, and so that's going to be a big, big uh, factor in, in what you're up to. Now, if you want to get on the radio, that's pretty easy if you've got money. You can just go down to a local radio station, local talk radio station, and wave some cash in their face or your checkbook in their face, and uh, most of them will hook you up with uh, with an hour slot on a weekend. Uh, they'll probably charge you depending on the market that you're in. I don't know Chattanooga if it's going to be 500 bucks an hour or what, but there's you know different market size, different station popularity. If the station's a very popular station, they're going to cost more than you know the the little what they call rim shot station, the station located just outside of town. The signal doesn't quite make the trip across all of. Chattanooga. Chattanooga, that one's going to be a little bit cheaper than uh, than the big market station. So, uh, Victor, I'll, I'll go through a few more ideas for you here off uh, the or w- with you off the air. But thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. So, uh, if you want to get on the radio, there's a few different ways to do it. One, you can go the long road, which Victor probably doesn't have time for. Uh, it would also be weird if you went into a radio station and said he wanted to intern at age 50. That's what I did. I went and I became an intern and eventually got hired on uh, on the air at the rock station that I was working at. And then years later, it parlayed into doing talk radio. I did that, too, at WISC in Asheville. No, really? You were a radio intern? For, I don't know, a couple of months. What was WISC? What, what it is that? Was, it was a news talk station. The format had changed. I think when we first mm. moved into town, they played classical music or something. Okay. Uh, and then, then they went talk? Yeah, mm. they were they were sort of the like the conservative answer to the Rush station Was in this town. before you went to the military? After. After. Okay, uh-huh. so you're kind of an old intern. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. And I would come in and just bring in like some stories that I'd pull off the internet. So and you were on the air or you were producing? No, no. I was just like like pulling tapes sometimes and jamming tapes Getting some in coffee for, for people. I, no, never no. did that. I really didn't do – They. I just never showed had to up. to pack the station van or anything like that? No, I didn't – I never <laughs> built a really good relationship. I built a good relationship with the guy who smoked and, and drank and was on his way out. And then when right. he when he left, I think my moorings were were gone. So I uh, that's interesting. I didn't know that about you, Johnny Ray. That's very interesting. I you know what I'd forgotten about it myself. How until, long were you there? Again, not long. I'll say li- a liberal estimate would be four months. I spent nine months there before I actually got hired on the air. So that's the long road, right? So the short road, if you're 50 and you have money, as some 50 year olds do, uh, you could just go right in and buy airtime. Now that's typically thought of as bad radio because usually the people that are paying for airtime don't really have the ability to do radio very well. I had well. no idea that's how those that's how those weekend shows came Some into of them, being. Not all of them. The ones that are talking about colon cleansers and things like that, those are definitely paying for airtime. Uh, the ones that are the attorneys and the like the computer guy, yeah. if they're locals, they're probably paying for airtime as well. Ah. Realtors, these, these are all kind of shows you hear on the weekends on talk radio. So that's the, the short version. But if you're paying for airtime, you don't really ever have a chance of being heard beyond that one radio station. If, if you're looking to be heard beyond that, then there's a whole syndication thing where you can Again, pay for airtime. You can pay for satellite time, or you can try to get a company like a uh, Premier Radio Networks, the people that syndicate Rush Limbaugh, for instance, to try to pick up your show. But they're not just going to pick up some newbie who's only been in the the business for three months. So it's a long road, right? Free Talk Live is we're here today on over 140 radio stations because I've made thousands of phone calls to talk radio stations over the last decade. I mean, that's that's the reason why Free Talk Live is as successful on the radio as we are. Um, it also helps that Mark's out there doing sales. So we're really um, a very small operation where we both kind of know our side of the business very, very well. So I didn't need to hire somebody to come in and build my own studio. I built it all on my own, uh, except for the table, because I'm not handy. I can plug in things like you know electronic boxes and and make them work together so having that knowledge and that know-how has been very very helpful for free talk live now 
what I've been talking about so far, as far as getting on the radio, is the old model of you got to get past the gatekeepers, these radio stations that are federally licensed. You could just go on eBay and buy a FM transmitter and an FM antenna, get uh, you know the parts necessary to put audio, uh, put an audio feed into that, say from LRN.FM. Put that antenna up uh, in your roof or in your barn or wherever, and you've got yourself a 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week radio station. Problem is, the FCC is probably going to come after you after maybe you know, eight months, six months, maybe a year. Who knows? Some some stations have lasted for longer than that. Um, it just all depends on whether or not somebody snitches on you. So if you want to get on the air, you can get on the air next week. Just order the parts tonight, get the parts in next week, do some learning about how to put them all together and what's the right way to do it. There's information about it over at broadcast.lrn.fm. I actually give you a rundown of some transmitters and antennas and things like that that you can get and how you can receive the lrn.fm signal and push that back out. But that doesn't get you directly on the air. That would get LRN on 24-7. But you could get your own mixer, plug that into your signal chain, your audio chain, and Turn down LRN and turn up your microphone and go on and have your own show there in Chattanooga. You could do that next week. The medium is still going strong. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that are looking to listen to local talk radio, and corporate radio is just not very good at providing that. So if you're willing to flout the FCC regulations, you can be on the air in days. We're coming up here in moments. You take control on Free Talk Live. Hour 2 is next. The flooring experts at Lumber Liquidators have over 8 million square feet of top quality flooring that must be cleared out by end of quarter, March 31st. They've got their lowest price ever on hand-scraped bamboo for just $189 a square foot and three-quarter inch pre-finished hickory for an unheard of $259 a square foot. Get free samples at your local store, plus 22-month special financing is available. So go to LumberLiquidators.com now to find the store nearest you. Hurry, everything must go by Monday, March 31st. Breathe it in, kid. Clean, fresh air thanks to these new air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are stronger than ever. And Granger's got over 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from. Just ordered a new batch from Granger.com today. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash air handler or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You're listening to the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Armand. And this is Jessica Armand. Here with your Liberty Beat for March 20th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,326, silver at $20.29, and Bitcoin is trading at $592. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem, operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush, online at SovereignBTC.com. And from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. For your residential mortgage needs, call Dorothy at 512-343-6494 or apply online at calldorothy.com. NMLS 216624. And from the Soleil School, enrolling children from 5 through 10 in Austin. Visit soleilschool.com. And now the news. Security fixes that address the problems Mt. Gox blamed for the loss of bitcoins were put into place Wednesday. PC World reports that the software, known as Bitcoin QT, has been renamed as Bitcoin Core. 
The rebranding is intended to show that it runs the core infrastructure of the cryptocurrency's transaction and verification network. According to the release notes, the latest version of Bitcoin software contains more than a half dozen fixes for transaction malleability. A surprise appearance Tuesday at the 2014 TED conference in Vancouver, Canada. Brian Hagen has this story. NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, by use of a remote-controlled satellite robot, appeared on stage to address the conference goers, outlining why he took the risk to make off with 1.7 million documents from the agency. I don't want to harm my government. I want to help my government. Snowden told the crowd that stopping terrorism is not the goal of the NSA's massive surveillance program. The bottom line is that terrorism has always been what we in the intelligence world would call a cover for action. Terrorism is something that provokes an emotional response that allows people to rationalize authorizing uh, powers and programs that they wouldn't give otherwise. Snowden concluded his talk by saying, We don't have to give up our privacy to have good government. We don't have to give up our liberty to have security. I'm Brian Hagan reporting for the Liberty Beat. The Obama administration won't give up the fight on climate change. On Wednesday, the White House revealed a new website serving as a one-stop location for a massive amount of climate change data. The LA Times reports the information contained on the site had previously been spread across the websites of numerous government agencies. The website is President Obama's latest move to deliver on his promise to use his executive authority to confront climate change despite congressional inaction. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, now offering ProPure water filtration, the only gravity-driven all-in-one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water as well. Find them in Austin at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. And from Mass Appeal, affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online at massappealinc.com. And from Grow Your Own Groceries, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. You're listening to The Liberty Beat for March 20th, 2014. Be sure to check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Wednesday, Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen stated the U.S. Central Bank would likely end its bond buying program by the fall and begin raising interest rates in the first half of 2015. Speaking at her first news conference as chair, Yellen discussed the bond buying program known as quantitative easing. Yellen stated that the Fed planned to wait a considerable time before pushing up interest rates. When further questioned how long this would actually take, the chairwoman's answer? Six months. The General Counsel in the Office of the Director of National Intelligence told the U.S. Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board that a recently revealed foreign surveillance program is specific with its targets and not bulk data collection. Robert Lidd is quoted here, getting a whole bunch of communications, hanging on to them, and then figuring out later what you want. This is not that. This is a situation where we figure out what we want, and we get that specifically. Litt was responding to a Washington Post report on the Mystic program, which reportedly is capable of recording 100% of a foreign country's telephone calls. You've been listening to The Liberty Beat. Remember, freeing your mind is freeing our world. Last month, the FDA approved Halusex, a new class of weight loss drug that helps users avoid overeating by producing nightmarish hallucinations whenever food is around. Halusex targets the brain's cerebral cortex, stimulating the centers responsible for fear and visual processing. Test subjects reported an unprecedented decrease in appetite and showed dramatic weight loss, with only 18% reporting night terrors or subsequent cardiac arrest. It's designed to make fatty and sugary foods even scarier. An apple just looks like it has fangs, but a milkshake will threaten you and your family by name. Earlier incarnations of the drug proved to be too powerful and produced mental states in which test subjects no longer believed that food had ever existed. An unshakable belief that the subject had to eat all of the food on the planet in order to prevent food from rising up and destroying the human race. Oh, you don't understand how to do this. Or the conviction that food could be negotiated with diplomatically. With the lab report, I'm Aisha Patel. This is the Onion News Network.
This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want here. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Should you be concerned about the IRS's notice about Bitcoin? We haven't really even done more than scratch the surface of that topic. We'll get into that uh, deeper here in a little bit. Also coming up, Johnny Ray's Game of the Week. He's leaving electronic games this week and going into the realm of card games. Not so. Not so, Ian. You're making assumptions. Really? Oh, is it, maybe it's an electronic card game? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll find out more about that here in a moment. You're right. I don't know much about it. Uh, but we'll learn that and your calls as well at 855-450-FREE+. Plus, you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Let's go to the phones and the fun. Brian, listening in Nashua, New Hampshire, to WSMN. Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. I want to bring your attention back to the legally definition to a speaking of early. Awesome. Yeah, sure. Society, uh, society seems to be doing this, this, how do you say, this dumbing down. Of, uh, of what we call logic. And why, I, mean, I mean this in the most fundamental way. Think of the word regulate. Well, when they, when they formed the uh, Constitution, they put the word regulate for, uh, uh, under the responsibility of the federal government. Regulate has the opposite definition of what it has today. Hmm. So similarly, you can look towards economics, then you look towards the word inflation. Tell, can you, Brian, can you tell me more about regulate? Yeah, I'd like to know what you mean by that. You're saying that back when the Constitution was written, that the word regulate in legalese meant the opposite of what it means today? Is that what you're saying? Precisely. Uh, and, and you've checked the Black's Law Dictionary or whatever to, to verify that? Well, the Black's Law Dictionary wasn't, wasn't very... Um, you, can, you can go back and you can see that these definitions uh, slide over time in, in Black's Law. But I'm talking about the actual context of, of the Oxford Dictionary. Okay. Makes sense? So, so well, what, what did mean regulate mean? Regulate meant to make regular. So what I mean by that is, take, it, take an example. The federal government was designed to prevent states from imposing taxes against other states. There was a duty to try to make commerce to be regular. That was the that was the definition. It wasn't to put up barriers. It wasn't to impose liens, taxes. It was to prevent them by its own name. Yeah. I do you follow so far. Yeah, and I, yeah, I've heard this before, and it certainly makes sense. And now regulation is about picking favorites, really, instead of make making an, an even a level playing field. Now, when you hear the word regulate, there's two things that come to mind. Barriers to entry mm-hmm. and imposing uh, imposing fines, taxes, and tariffs on people that want to enter, say, any given industry. When you want, say, you regulate the pharmaceutical industry, that means nobody can be a part of the pharmaceutical industry unless you're already a corporation. It's pretty hard for me to start a, you know, if I'm a genius chemist, to just go out and start my own drug company. In fact, it's impossible. And that's because the word regulate has been shifted slowly over the past couple hundred years to where it now it means the total opposite of what it's been 200 years ago. Hmm. So what is, I mean, uh, that's interesting, but what is it that people can kind of take away from this? What people should take away from this is what, what people are trying to do to change the definite end of our new definition. I point to Attorney General uh, Eric Holder, which tried to say, if you remember last year, that due process is not judicial process. By that, that is, uh, not only was that just an Orwellian phrase, but he's trying to actually change the meaning of due process to where it means the opposite of due process. Hmm. And so it's laughable on its face, but people are going to go along with it unless they actually, like, unless they actually hold on to some sort of principle in terms of their, ling- their language. People have the articulation ability of, like, a three-year-old. They're just willing to accept what any authority tells them. And, like, it doesn't matter what context they grew up. It doesn't matter what kind of uh, you know, meaning that they have behind it. They're just going to go, like, well, the authority said that, and the lawyer said that. So thus, that must be the definition. Mm. And I, 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 I really encourage everyone to hold on to what they think is common sense. 
Good suggestions tonight, Brian. Thank you for the call and your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. These rules that the government people write, they can change the, the wording to mean things you don't think that they mean. I mean, one of the classic examples of this, probably the most popular example of this, is person. There has been a bit of an uproar, uh, certainly among lefty circles, and rightfully so, where people got wind that the government was defining the word person to include corporations. And when people hear about that, it just doesn't make sense. Because when people hear the word person, they think of a human being. They think of uh, you and me, flesh and blood, bones, muscles, things like that. They think of people with eyeballs. But you don't think of a file folder as a person. We don't, as humans, we don't think of that because that's not the definition that we're raised to understand of what a person is. But in legal land, person means a corporation. It can mean a you know a human being, and it means you know a variety of different types of corporations. But the idea being that in the crazy legal land of government, this corporation, this legally created fiction, this entity. That it is and it has the same rights as a human being. And that's pretty insulting to people when they finally find that out. This isn't a new thing. There was just a, that court ruling or something like that within the last few years. God, what was it called? Uh, it always comes up again and again in, in discussions. I wish I could remember what it was. Citizens United. That was the, the court ruling that people are all up in arms about because they you know, essentially re- recertified in court that, yes— you know, we, the government, believe that persons include corporations. So I understand why people are upset about that. They're completely justified to be upset about that. It's just that that's nothing new. That's not a new thing. Governments have been considering corporations as persons for a long time. I mean, probably ever since they created the idea of a corporation. And that's what essentially a corporation is to the state, is it's this kind of avatar, if you will, this this creation that doesn't actually exist. The business exists, but the corporation is this legal fiction that has been created to kind of protect the businessman. In a lot of cases, the corporations limit liability of the businessman or the the people behind the business to what the business itself uh, has as far as funds as opposed to the officers of the, the company, etc. My whole take on this, Ian, is uh, is, is, is words. You know that people talk about how words are powerful and words have meaning. And words are great, and rules are made out of words, and rules, I think, are indispensable. They're incredibly useful, but rules and words are not enough to bind a man who's got a lot of ambition. It's Mm -hmm. not enough to bind an evil man because he he can be more powerful than those words. So So don't put your trust in words to stop evil. Certainly not. Words have been the excuse for a lot of evil over time. And those people that are seeking that power use words to control people. They use words to flummox them, to confuse them, to frustrate them. Anybody who's ever been charged with a criminal charge or even just a traffic offense, try reading the statutes, man. I mean, unless you are a trained attorney, it is really frustrating. At least that's my experience with these things. It's very frustrating to actually you know, try to read this legalese. And that's because things you read don't mean what they say. I I I feel for you. You're 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 one of these in system activists, and you're there in the courts, and you're you're trying to make the rules work for you. And I don't I I, I can't imagine spending yeah, but I don't spend as much time reading documents as you do. You're the one who found out the the Johnny Ray approach of uh, challenging the witness right after they get sworn in. That's a court rule. That you must have read the rules about that. It was worth a few laughs, but uh, no, a lawyer. I did, I did, but there was a friend of the Free State attorney in town and we were just having lunch and i was kind of and telling him my woes it. and he said well, why don't you try this he mm-hmm. was actually he was amazed that it worked it did work once but it hasn't worked since then I don't it worked think. twice oh, arguably toll free number tonight 855-450-FREE that's 855-450-3733 they write their words down on paper in an attempt to control us but of course as you point out they don't follow their own words they don't follow their own rules 855-450-FREE you can share your thoughts on whatever's on your mind. Still to come, the IRS and Bitcoin. This is Free Talk Live. 
Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You got to pay attention to the small things, kid. Small things matter. Small problems become big problems. Take a transformer. Rain leaks into a transformer. Insulation system breaks down. Insulation system breaks down. Copper windings overheat. Copper windings overheat. Transformer blows. Transformer blows. Facility goes dark. Facility goes dark. Kid, you don't want to know what happens next. That's why I use Granger. Granger helps keep small problems from turning into big problems. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up what you want. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line, and you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. In fact, some of those features include listening options. You can get tuned into Free Talk Live anytime. Yeah, we're live from 7 to 10 at night Eastern seven nights a week but on our live streams you always hear the latest episode of free talk live no matter what time of day 
you tune in. We've got a broadband, midband, and narrowband version of the show. We've also got uh, radio stations, over 140 radio stations from coast to coast. Now, those are the licensed radio stations that take Free Talk Live because those are the ones that we can more easily keep track of. But we do have some heroic pirate radio operators out there also picking up the show, and we try to list those on our website as well. It's just that they're kind of hard to, to know when they come and go. They don't always let you know when they're airing the show because pirate radio operators generally want to be anonymous. But they are. Uh, I appreciate that those folks are out there too. We've also got satellite listening options, including the LRN.FM free-to-air satellite channel, which you can get anywhere in North or Central America. As long as you have a view of the southern sky and some cheap satellite equipment, you can get tuned into Free Talk Live and all the other great LRN.FM shows any time of the day or night. We've also got the webcam, which allows you to watch, listen, and interact with other listeners that are in the chat room. Plus, there are listen lines where you can call and uh, dial a long-distance number and listen over your phone line. So plenty of ways to get Free Talk Live into your ears. Go and learn more at listen.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Fred in California listening online. Hey, Fred. Hey, how's it going? Uh, hey. The first thing I want to do is thank you for what you guys are doing. Uh, man, uh, hosting a talk show radio today to, to get our rights back and get back to a, a country where we had a lot of freedom, uh, it doesn't get much better than what you're doing. So oh, you're, thanks. you guys are here. Yeah, no, I really mean that. Uh, I'm disabled, and I listen to a Wi-Fi radio and a talk show activist. I think I've called in you guys a few times. But cool. I just want to throw What's, this I'm just curious. What this. brand is the Wi-Fi radio? What are you using? Do you use uh, Logitech. Cool. And it's a red one, too. So. <laughs> Neat. <laughs> kind of sexy. How did you, is that how you found us? Were you just kind of surfing through the stations on there, or did you already know about us and you found us on there? No, I started surfing around. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much um, confined to being in a bed in a lot of pain. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, it's horrible. I, I, yeah, I could, I could take up a whole show on, on geez, uh, how to get rid of pain by juicing instead mm. of going through 27 meds and five back fusions and all that sort of stuff. But I do a lot of reading. And I started reading history after the trade powers dropped and, and dropped the novels because uh, you don't read this in novels. And mm -hmm. I had no idea what I was going to learn. But what I have to put on the table today for your opinion is, you know, um, under the original Constitution and what's left of it now, it, it, it seemed to me it, de it defined a citizen as a member of the body politic to show allegiance to our government in return for the government to protect and maintain our individual rights. Now, hold like on a second. The, what, the Constitution, I don't think, defines what a citizen is, does it? Uh, that or maybe um, maybe the Bill of Rights does. Uh, I don't it, think so. I don't think so. I don't think the uh, word citizen, from what I've heard, it doesn't come into the Constitution until the 14th Amendment uh, in the Bill of Rights. Yeah, that's where, that's where some big changes started. So, and what I, but that is kind of the classic so, definition of a citizen. I mean, anybody who goes and pulls up uh, dictionary.com yeah. or any legal dictionary will find a very similar definition as what you gave. Yeah, and, and what I noticed uh, on here on Main Street is that I noticed that policemen don't have a duty or obligation to protect you. Well, not only and, do you, not only can you notice that, but also there's a lot of court cases that'll uh, will back that up. In fact, if you if you Google "no obligation to protect," you'll come up with more than one court case from the Supreme Court that actually makes it pretty crystal clear that the government, no government, state, federal, local, has any obligation to provide you with protection. So, I think I know where yeah. you're going to. You're going to say that that means there's no citizens, right? That and there's. There's no state, there's no city, there's no county, there's no United States of America. Well, what there are are armed men and women, and uh, well, there are men and women with armed men and women at their disposal who will do as they're told, for the most part, that call themselves yeah. the state, they call themselves the city. They, they, are, a, they are a tiny minority. Yeah, but th those people exist, and they are violent, and they're willing to use their violence on you if you don't do what they say. Uh, but I totally agree oh, with you. The idea of a uh, the idea of a state is nothing more than just a uh, fantasy constructed to keep people docile and obedient and and uh, and essentially distract them. The idea of nations, for instance, are a way to divide people artificially. 
divide humans from one another and make them think that, oh, those other people are bad and we are good and so you should fight them. And that keeps people distracted from the real problem, which is that the people that are right there in their own town or city or, or state or whatever you want to call it, those political designations, they're the ones that are the real enemy, if you want to use that term. And I, I just consider them my brothers and sisters who are mistaken. But they're the ones, if you, want to, yeah. if, you want to have, if you want to pick an enemy, it's those people. They're the ones who are threatening and killing and harming and caging our brothers and sisters. And I think they, they need to learn a peaceful lesson about how it is that they are wrong. I have a question. Um, did the 14th Amendment change the definition of a person to a corporation? I don't think so, but I don't have it in front of me at the moment, so no, I don't believe yeah, that's true. I, my understanding is is that both starting from the federal government all the way down to, to the cities, they're all incorporated. That's true. They're called municipal corporations at the city level. Now, does that mean that they run under administrative and uniform commercial code? Oh boy, I, I don't know. They all have the you know, this UCC conspiracy theory. I've I've certainly done some research on it in the past. Uh, there, the uniform commercial code is something that exists in all state, as I understand it, in all state government uh, statutes. And there's yeah. a lot of theories out there that, well, if you just sign your check, uh, UCC 207-1, then you'll get out of the system. Or, you know, some sort of thing like, oh, you can just sign the check uh, w accepted for value and put UCC 308-2 or something like that. And then, then you won't have to pay your mortgage payment. And there's all kinds of ridiculous conspiracy theories out there surrounding this uniform commercial code. I think that uh, you know d to focus on that is a real mistake, in my opinion. Um, I believe that we're under martial law and have been since the Civil War. Is that correct? Well, again, and I'm not a his I'm not a historian, but there's certainly plenty of people out there who've claimed that uh, whenever the government declares a state of emergency, as it can do, you know, for war or during natural disasters yeah. and things like that, that the that those states of emergency are never rescinded, and so therefore. They, when they claim this state of emergency, that all of a sudden the whatever restrictions the Constitution had put on them, they're all gone because it's a state of emergency. And so it's kind of the loophole, the legal loophole that they're supposedly using to get out of this stuff. Not that it would matter anyway, because, you know, what are you going to do? Go to go to Washington and say, hey, you guys didn't rescind that state of emergency. This all has been illegal. Well, no, it's whatever we say is legal because we say it's legal. We're in charge of the courts and we write the laws and you'll do as we say, sir. Thanks, Fred. I appreciate your call and thoughts. Tonight, 855 450 free. At least you'll do as, uh, as they say until you decide to stop. And maybe we can dis uh, do that together here in New Hampshire. We'll talk about the Free State Project and uh, Bitcoin on the way. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. 
To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Right here, toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, the Pro XPN toll-free line. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show. And username, lrn.fm. Archives, we've got them. You can just go click and download, get as many episodes as you want for free, unlike those other talk shows, the big names in the business. They want to charge you for accessing their websites. In fact, I just heard there's... You know, I get the industry uh, headlines, get industry news in my email box every right. day. And there's some talk show host who's been hosting on various shows or various stations throughout the country over the last few years. And now he's striking out on his own and he's going to start podcasting. Except you have to pay for it. We've never charged for our archives. You just go and get them. They're yours uh, at freetalklive.com. In fact, you can take them and copy them and give them to your friends. We don't care. In fact, the YouTube channel is now available as well, so maybe you want to actually watch an old episode of Free Talk Live. Again, not really sure why, but some people are into that. Uh, You can go and go to youtube.freetalklive.com. It's something that we're doing that's fairly new. It's probably about a month old at this point, uh, so you don't get to go back too far on this. But we started doing it, and we're doing it consistently on a nightly basis now, uploading our full three-hour show So unlike our audio archives, which have no, uh, they don't have the same commercial breaks that you get during when you're listening on the radio, the video archives are in no way edited. They're just take a chunk of video and put it online because honestly it would take forever to edit the commercials out of a, out of a video feed and I don't have that, I don't have that kind of time. So uh, we do have it up there. You can go and clip out parts if you want, download the videos using KeepVid or the various different downloading uh, apps if that's something you want to do. They're there now, and we'll put them up every night. YouTube.freetalklive.com. Sorry. YouTube.freetalklive.com. I am glad because there's documentation I wanted. Ian, you'll notice my hair is standing straight on end right now. Well, you've got your headphones over top of it right now. Well, I thought the the bit in the front was still be Okay. There's a little bit. So I need to work on that. But I had some hair product left over from a, uh, a stage play that I was in. And when I was in the play, I was really proud of the way I looked. I actually had some tattoos drawn on my face. Mm-hmm. And now 
you know, now there's a recording of a little bit of the magic. It's true. And people during the breaks will really get to see uh, the magic of your, your hair as it is right now. But uh, you can go to cam.freetalklive.com if you want to watch us live. But basically what we're doing is we're recording the cam feed. Uh, every night. And so if you miss the cam version of the show live, you can now watch them in archive form at youtube.freetalklive.com. So we'll continue here. Of course, you can bring up anything you want. We just barely in the last hour scratched the surface of news that's kind of been going viral, at least within the Liberty community or or the Bitcoin community more specifically. That's this IRS ruling about Bitcoin. They have finally spoken And they've issued a formal notice, according to CNN Money, that says that it can tax Bitcoin transactions. They call it a property, not a currency, which, excuse me, is different than uh, what FinCEN, which is another government agency, has been saying about Bitcoin. They have been saying it's a currency. So apparently the government can have it both ways if they want. Whatever benefits them is the way they're going to have it. And according to the story here for, from CNN Money is, that's big news for Bitcoin, they claim. The independent electronic money that's growing in popularity. It's not a blessing or a curse by the U.S. government, but it's a sign that authorities are taking the digital money more seriously. On Tuesday, the IRS notice said payments worth at least $600 and made with Bitcoins will be taxed the same way the agency treats property transactions. That includes payments made with Bitcoins, gains realized by investing it, and income derived from producing them on your computer, a process known as mining. I wonder where the $600 number came from, I, whether it's related to some other pro- ruling on property. Yeah, it's some sort of IRS rule about what you got to pay taxes on as okay. far as if I've heard that if, you, you know, if you're like running a business and you buy two computers, totals more than $600, then you got to report that or something. I don't know. Johnny Ray, I don't fill out these tax things, so I really don't know thing number one about doing it. I haven't done it in approximately a decade of my life, and I didn't know much about it when I did it. You know, I did the easy form or whatever because my parents told me I was supposed to when I was a teenager. I wish I'd, I wish I'd never done it, personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know but, you do. But, you know, it is what it is, and uh, so but what's... What's ludicrous, uh, one of the things that's ridiculous about this is the IRS put out a uh, multiple question uh, Q&A kind of thing here on their notice. It goes on for approximately 14, 15, 16 questions about virtual currency and IRS rules. And it's just this indecipherable, we were talking about legal legalese earlier. Uh-huh. Just reading through this, it'll make you want to gouge your eyes out. It's just so frustrating to try to read and comprehend this because... It's just not designed. This is not designed to make sense to the average person. Can you give me an example? I, I really I really don't want to read this, Johnny Ray. It would be so dry and so awful. They talk about uh, there's all these terms that they use, like income and property. And, of course, income doesn't mean what you think it means. It means what they say it means, virtual currency. I'll give you. I guess I'll give you one uh, excerpt here. I'm just randomly picking here. Question six: Does a taxpayer have a gain or loss upon an exchange of virtual currency for other property? Yes. If the fair market value of property received in exchange for virtual currency exceeds the taxpayer's adjusted basis of the virtual currency, the taxpayer has a taxable gain. The taxpayer has a loss if the fair market value of the property received is less than the adjusted basis of the virtual currency. And there's another sentence. But have I lost you yet? Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's just absolutely awful. Back to the CNN Money report. So they say, so this is the, you know, the mainstream media's interpretation of the IRS's confusing uh, notice. They say that if you pay your employees with Bitcoin, it would have to go on your staff's W-2 forms and they would have to pay a federal income tax on it. Paying an independent contract. Well, how the hell are you going to do that exactly? Paying an independent contractor, they have to put Bitcoin payments on their 1099. A payment made using virtual currency is subject to information reporting to the same extent as other payment made in property, says the IRS. So essentially they're just saying here that, okay, you Bitcoiners, come on now, start filling out forms. You need to be tracking everything and reporting and converting the Bitcoin price into the uh, to the U.S. dollar value at whatever arbitrary time. I don't know if you're supposed to do that when you fill out the tax form or when you sell the Bitcoin or how all that's going to work because Bitcoin changes in value over the course of a day, yeah, let be, alone the course of a tax year. It'd be when you when you sold it. That's when you would you. That's 
the numbers you would use to report your gain or loss. But again, it seems like it's all on you because Bitcoin can al- allows you to be your own bank and the the bean counters at the IRS don't know what day you did or didn't do they only your Bitcoin know if you transactions. Tell them. They only know if you report to them. But one of the concerns I have here, Johnny Ray, is that there are going to be some companies, like maybe Coinbase, for instance, uh, that want regulation. So what if these guys start to issue IRS forms for everybody who, let's say, you use Coinbase to cash out Bitcoins into cash? What if now they start sending out IRS forms to people for that? I'm sure that's going to happen. I think that's not cool. Yeah, but the there's going to be somebody that that's your fault for doing business with the company that is doing that to it's you. It's true. It's true. And, and there's going to be players who won't do that because the I whole so. spirit animating Bitcoin is is totally not about the IRS. There's two sides though, Johnny Ray. There's the in the Bitcoin world, there's the side of the people who want to be regulated who see that as uh, as a way to build legitimacy for Bitcoin. And then there's the side of the people like us who are like, well, screw the state. We are going to do what we want. So this is probably good news for the people who want regulation. We'll see what comes out of it. So while it's not currency, according to CNN's money in the legal sense of the word, it's still a virtual currency. The IRS admits Bitcoin and other electronic tokens function like real currency, but the agency holds back from applying that sort of definition because they say, quote, it does not have legal tender status in any jurisdiction, unquote. So that's their reasoning as to why they don't consider it a currency. Now, what is legal tender status? In case you don't know, legal tender, if you look at the dollars in your wallet, they say legal tender on them. And what that means is the government forces people to accept it. If you are located within their political jurisdiction running a business, you must accept their dollars or else they'll put you in a cage. 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Are you a Bitcoin user? We'd love to hear your thoughts on this ruling. It's Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Attention radio listeners, are you getting amazing results from your store-bought Omega-3? Since taking Omax-3, mental fuzziness is gone. I'm on top of things. My bad cholesterol had gone down, and my triglycerides had gone down. Being 53, sometimes it's pretty uncomfortable getting up and getting out of bed. With the Omax-3, I'm jumping out of bed, and the joints feel great. We want your Omax story next, so we're sending you a free supply. Developed by Ivy League doctors affiliated with Yale University, Omax-3 is clinically tested to help improve cholesterol and reduce triglycerides by 30% in just 30 days while fighting joint pain better than your store brand. You can also feel improvements in your mood and memory with your first free supply. Omax 3's pharmaceutical-grade omega-3s come individually blister-packed so it absorbs better and gives you faster results with no fish burps. Feel results in just days, guaranteed. Get your free supply today for just the cost of shipping. Call 1-800-672-4601. That's 1-800-672-4601. 800-672-4601. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because 
I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control of the airwaves right here toll free at 855 453. That's the Pro XPN toll free line. What is Pro XPN? It's a global virtual private network. Private being the operative word. They are encrypting. If you have their software, which you can get for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, uh, they encrypt your internet connection, meaning that your internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing online. Right now, they're probably logging everything that you, uh, every website you visit, every search term you enter for, in some cases, up to five years. Maybe you'd like to stop that from happening. You can go to proxpn.com slash FTL right now Download their software. There's a free account, so you can start out and try it immediately at no cost to you. And you can uh, experience what it's like. It's very easy to use. You just install the software and you click connect, and uh, then you're encrypted. So your ISP is then, at that point, shut out. ProXPN does not log your online <laughs> your online habits. Uh, ProXPN is also good for a few other things, including protecting your privacy in that they protect your location. So when you connect to one of their servers, when you go to websites using ProXPN, the websites you're visiting will think you're coming from the location of the ProXPN server rather than your actual location. So people won't know where you physically are when using ProXPN. In addition to that, you can get around blocks. Let's say you're on a network that's unfamiliar to you, or maybe it is familiar. Maybe it's a school network or a, a work network where they have restrictions on what you can do, which websites you can go to. Not if you've got ProXPN, you get to ride around those blocks. Or even if you're in a foreign country, a China or something like that, where you're, you can't search for certain things. Again, if you've got ProXPN, your connection is unrestricted. So ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go there, grab the software. And then when you're ready, you can upgrade to their premium account and get 20% off using our discount code FTL20. That's 20% off, not for the first month, but for the lifetime of your account. That brings the price down if you buy their annual package to 5 bucks a month. And you can save even more by paying with Bitcoin. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. And that is where you can get started with ProXPN. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose but your privacy. So go and learn more. ProXPN.com slash FTL. The code that you need is FTL20. Let's go uh, to the phones. Your thoughts here, especially if you are a Bitcoin user. Are you going to change your Bitcoin habits? Because right now the IRS is saying that you've got to report. you got to report your transactions and how much money you're taking out of Bitcoin and et cetera, et cetera. Honestly, I haven't read this ridiculous question and answer that they have. I tried to start reading it earlier today, and it was just so frustrating and so hard to understand and read. I don't know how anyone could possibly understand this, unless you're a professional accountant or something like that, CPA perhaps might understand it, but this is just absolutely, to me, it's just in, an impenetrable wall of legalese, and I don't care. I don't care what their rules and regulations are. My perspective on this is, well, who, who the hell are these people? What obligation do I have to do what it is that they're saying? I mean, we go back to the call we talked to the 
gentleman earlier who was pointing out that there's no citizen because in order to be a citizen, there has to be a, a trade. There has to be you giving your duty of allegiance in return for an obligation of protection. Well, there's no obligation to protect from the government, so there can be no citizen. The deal's null. It never was a deal in the first place. They never had, in your lifetime, an obligation to protect you. So you're not a citizen. So if you're not a citizen, how can you be uh, you know, required to pay taxes into this system? Yeah, this bears a little more research as far as the ins and outs of it. I th thought at first if you were going to sell some bitcoins and you realized a gain or a loss, then you'd be able to report that and get some kind of benefit or n not benefit from the IRS by your realized gain or loss. But then they also say that Bitcoin miners are are they have to be taxed on that and there's no necessary gain or loss there. Mm -hmm. Do they say you get uh, 0.2 Bitcoins a day with your Bitcoin mining rig? Mm -hmm. uh, do you calculate that every day? I, I guess you would do you ha calculate, calculate that every on, 24 hours. Do you or? calculate it on when you do your taxes? I don't know. And I have no clue, and I don't really care. I don't either. think the people writing because the they don't know rules. you're running a mining rig. They don't know you're running a mining rig unless you tell them you're running a mining rig. Mm -hmm. So if you're running a mining rig, just keep it to yourself. I suspect that with a lot of Wall Street interest now in Bitcoin, a Fortress Investment Group is partnering with I forget Coinbase or something or CoinDesk. Okay. To uh, to launch a a fund, a Bitcoin fund, and Fortress manages sixty plus billion in investments, and their their leader is a cheerleader for Bitcoin. Okay, the market cap for Bitcoin is only seven billion right now. Mm -hmm. So, and they're not the only ones on Wall Street getting into Bitcoin. So, I think with the big players coming in, um. The uh, the IRS wants to be ready to certainly the big players are going to play by the rules right the these big these guys are that fully money. they're fully regulated and they are going to jump through these hoops but you and I what obligation do I have besides the fact that they have men with guns and cages and don't have a problem putting you in one is there any actual obligation there really isn't is there you never really agreed to this did you nobody nobody in their right mind would agree to this deal. Oh, yeah, you're making money over there? Well, how about you do all this work and you figure out how much money you're making and we'll give you some numbers and you can figure out how much money you should pay us and if you're wrong, we'll go ahead and charge you with criminal acts and put you in a jail cell. Who wants that deal? It sounds pretty fool. It sounds crazy. Yeah, I'm not in I'm not interested in it. Now, somebody else would say it's crazy to not do what they say because they'll put you in a jail cell. And I get that. I get that concern. I really do. But you have to ask yourself when is it going to end? Are you ever going to be free of these people and their demands on your life? You think you're going to be able to beg your way out of it? You think uh, Washington, D.C. is going to just roll back the IRS, cut back taxes? think if you elect a Republican, they're going to cut the taxes? Well, that didn't work during the Bush administration. So there was a, the Bush administration, there was such an orgy of spending that yeah. happened after that. Well, yeah, and the funny part was there was what uh, one of their flunkies – in Congress said uh, that they'd cut they'd cut government to the bone. <laughs> it's as slim as we can get it. So what are you going to do about it? And also, how how can you pay taxes at the same time and and know what they go towards? They're going towards killing people. They're going towards imprisoning people. You're paying for your own enslavement. So I'm wondering what Bitcoiners are going to do, if anything, differently about these regulations. Let's go to uh, Jordan in New York, listening online to LRN.FM. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Ames. How's it going? What's on your mind tonight? I just want to talk about the Bitcoins here. Um, yes, sir. I know that was a big topic today. So um, Here you are. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Um, well, I feel Bitcoins is a great idea. Um you know, it's a great alternative currency to, you know, the government uh, currency, the U.S. dollar. And um, I, I really do respect that in the fact, in that fact. Um, however, I do feel Bitcoin is still very volatile. 
um, as you can see with the inflation of the prices, you know, such as events that happen um, with the Silk Road and Mount GOX closing, um, it really fluctuates the prices of Bitcoins. And that can be a concern for many Bitcoin users, such as myself. Okay. It doesn't really concern me personally um, because I'm in this for the long haul. And it seems like recently it's kind of floated around 600 the $600 range, so it hasn't been particularly volatile, in my opinion. Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, look at the event with um, Silk Road, when uh, Silk Road seized, uh, got their Bitcoin seized and the government uh, seized the website. Yeah, a bit, it, it dipped a little bit for a short moment, but it came right back. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, yes and no. I, I would the only, the only yes sustained... Bitcoin. Uh, drop in in price always come after huge gains. You know, the the, the mm. price will rocket up to something twelve hundred. Yeah, at, you know, out of our wildest dreams, going from two hundred to twelve hundred, and then we'll settle at seven hundred. And then it's right. been a while since it's done that though. That was back in November when that price spike happened. I was looking at the lifetime uh, chart for the price of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and it's funny the. It was funny to me. It's probably not funny to anybody who's used to looking at charts, but every every jump in price has kind of an identical mm. uh, shape to Pattern. it. Pattern. Yeah, and um, and and sometimes the gaps between those those bubbles are. I think I think it's been as long as twenty three months, mm. and uh, that was that was between like two dollars and a hundred dollars. Well, Jordan, if you've got more you want to share, and because I am curious as to what you as a Bitcoin user are going to do, if anything, about the IRS rules, if you want to hang, you're welcome to join us in hour number three, which is coming up here in uh, just a few moments. The IRS claiming you Bitcoin folks, uh, that we're going we're gonna to have to jump through some hoops. Well, personally, I'm not interested. How about you? 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You take control here on Free Talk Live. The flooring experts at Lumber Liquidators have over 8 million square feet of top quality flooring that must be cleared out by end of quarter, March 31st. They've got their lowest price ever on hand-scraped bamboo for just $189 a square foot and three-quarter inch pre-finished hickory for an unheard of $259 a square foot. Get free samples at your local store, plus 22-month special financing is available. So go to LumberLiquidators.com now to find the store nearest you. Hurry, everything must go by Monday, March 31st. Quantum Vibe It's year 2523 There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed With brain implants and artificial gravity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty QuantumVibe.com From Big Head Press When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Rick Young. Today is Monday, March 24th, 2014. Radio VR News. The search for survivors continues in a mudslide in Washington state that has claimed at least eight lives. Correspondent Sandy Kozell reports on what Chief Travis Hotz of Snohomish County has to say about the tragedy. This is still a rescue mission until 
we determine otherwise. Rescue crews worked into the night in rural Washington state, searching for survivors of yesterday's massive, deadly landslide. Snohomish County Fire District 21 Chief Travis Hotz says people were heard yelling for help from within a huge mud and debris field. I was at awe. I've never seen anything like it in my 20-year fire service career. The slide blocked the north fork of the Stillaguamish River, which prompted an evacuation notice because water was rising rapidly behind the debris. I'm Sandy Kozell. Washington Governor Jay Inslee, who took an aerial tour of the mudslide site, says the news may be grim for some who are waiting for loved ones to be found. The devastation, of course, is, is overwhelming. Um, and I had a sense that uh, we, uh, we're going to have some hard news here. President Obama is in the Netherlands this morning, starting a week-long European trip under the shadow of Russia's presence in southern Ukraine. White House correspondent Mark Smith has more. This trip was already jam-packed even before Russia took Crimea. A nuclear security summit in The Hague, talks with EU chiefs in Brussels, a visit with Pope Francis at the Vatican, and a meeting with Saudi King Abdullah in Riyadh. But now, as the Allies worry about Russian troops massing near eastern Ukraine, there's an emergency G7 meeting here tonight. While that won't include Russia, the 53 nations summit on nuclear safety and terrorism will. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's attending, and we'll see Secretary of State John Kerry in the latest bid to defuse the Ukraine crisis. Mark Smith with the president, The Hague. Correspondent Jerry Bootlender tells us the administration is rejecting calls to provide arms to Ukraine, preferring diplomacy and sanctions it says are working. The administration says the two rounds of sanctions that have been imposed on Russia are having an impact. National Security Advisor Susan Rice pointing to a downgrade in Russia's credit rating by one of the major agencies. The president could impose sanctions that target certain parts of the Russian economy. Rice refused to say what might prompt such a move. Millions of people in the U.S. will remain uninsured despite this week's final frenzied push to sign them up under the health care law. Correspondent Ross Simpson explains. Researchers say many of the uninsured just don't know much about the health overhaul and its March 31st deadline for enrolling in plans that can yield big discounts. An Associated Press GFK poll found that only one-fourth of the uninsured had tried to sign up through the state or federal insurance marketplaces that are also known as exchanges by late January. If they don't enroll in time, many will face a fine and be locked out of the subsidized plans until next year. Ross Simpson, Washington. Thousands of New Yorkers are likely to see flood insurance premiums rise as the government faces out subsidized flood insurance nationally in some of the most at-risk areas. Correspondent Julie Walker has more. President Obama signed a law Friday that put a halt to an overhaul of the national flood insurance program that was supposed to end subsidized insurance for homes and businesses that were built in flood zones. The bill merely delays many rate hikes. Data analyzed by the Associated Press shows about 49,000 primary homeowners in New York State will face annual rate hikes up to 18 percent. About 10,700 businesses and owners of second homes will face annual increases of 25 percent until they switch over to a risk-based rate. Julie Walker, New York. The state of Michigan is going to wait before deciding whether to recognize new same-sex marriages in the state. Ed Dunhue explains why. About 300 couples got married Saturday in four counties in Michigan. A federal appeals court judge later placed a stay on a federal judge's decision Friday, overturning the state's 2004 constitutional ban on same-sex marriage. Governor Rick Snyder's office says state agencies won't immediately recognize those marriages, but will wait until the case is resolved. The decision blocks Michigan County clerks from issuing new same-sex marriage licenses until the Court of Appeals decides whether to extend the stay. That's expected no sooner than Wednesday. I'm Ed Donahue. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Rick Young. Sony released this week the Nasal HD 340s, a brand new pair of high quality nose buds designed to let users blast different scents into their nostrils throughout the day. The Onion let consumers across the nation sound off about their excitement for the new product. I've always got them in my nose. At work, at the gym, on the bus, wherever. These days, I can't stop smelling tennis ball. 
Retailing for $49.99, the nose buds accompany the launch of Sony's new online odor store, which sells over 22,000 different smells for download and immediate inhalation. Still, not everyone is quite as enthusiastic about the new product. These things suck. I mean, a lot of times it only works out of the right nostril. The other day I tried smelling picnic table. It smelled more like hardwood floor. And also, to be honest, I have a really hard time breathing with these things on. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the third hour of the program. You just dial on in toll-free and bring up whatever you want. Whether you want to comment on the Bitcoin ruling from the IRS, which says, in effect, that the IRS believes Bitcoin is property, which, of course, is different from what other government agencies and courts have said, which is that Bitcoins are currency. The IRS is claiming that because it's property, that it must uh, that you who have bitcoins must follow the rules according to reporting pro uh, property something or other, whatever that means. If you know anything about taxes, maybe that means something to you. It doesn't mean anything to me. But I'm wondering if what uh, if this is going to have any effect on how Bitcoin users uh, react. They're saying that now you've got to fill out a bunch of forms or something like that and give over information. And I would hope that the majority of Bitcoin users are disobedient and don't care what the IRS says. But I'm curious, what do you think about this? 855 450 free. Let's go to Jordan. He hung through the, uh, the news there uh, in New York, and you're listening online at lrn.fm. Jordan, uh, other thoughts you want to share? How, how are you responding to the IRS news? Uh, well, as you are, um, I'm very really not bothered by it. Um, I just find it more propaganda by the course of government. Find another reason to steal money from us. Um, now, Aren't you scared, that, though, Jordan? I mean, you're not scared. I mean, it says here in the Verge article in big print, they made this extra large just so people get it real clear. The ruling takes effect immediately, and failure to comply will result in fines. Aren't you scared? I'm not afraid. I'm, no, not at all. It, like I said, it's just uh, another form of theft by the government, and that's all these fines, supposed fines are. So it's, you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna report your Bitcoin transactions to the to the feds? Absolutely not. Good. Um, and you know, it. With that said, people can just tumble their Bitcoins and use um, other services that hide their address. So you really can't put uh, one Bitcoin address to a person. So it's going to make it really difficult um, for the government to try to. Do that. Yeah, they're going to have a tough time fine. going after anybody holding bitcoins, but it's the the, the tricky part's going to be cashing them out. Like if you take bitcoins and you turn them into cash, that could be an issue because we know they've been arresting people in Florida uh, for doing bitcoin transactions over certain amounts and having you know people. Uh, you know, there's there's some concerns about how that's going to pan out. I think, and certainly certain companies like Coinbase, which while they have a nice service, are particularly interested in being regulated. I don't expect it'll be too long before they're sending out 1099s or something like that. Yeah. And I, I guess if you have your uh, Bitcoins in Coinbase, it's uh, time to move. And I, I would definitely recommend that. I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I, could, I do have uh, Bitcoins in Coinbase. Jordan, any I'm other thoughts you want to share tonight? Um, no. I believe that's it. Thanks for the call. Appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Liberty Phoenix. He's on the line in Illinois. You're on Free Talk Live, listening online via the TuneIn app. Hey, Ian, Johnny Ray. It's great hey. to be on with you guys. What's um, on your mind tonight? I had a little story, of, had a little story about purchasing a uh, a new work vehicle. Um, when I my my old work vehicle uh, exploded on me. So Whoa! My own carelessness, but. Are you well, okay? Well, not so much exploded, but you know, I shot a I shot a rod through the engine block because I didn't put oil in it. Yikes! Stupid me. Um, but I needed a new vehicle, so one of my other technicians, well, he had a vehicle that was for sale. I was like, okay, I'll I'll pick it up off you. Are you the owner of this business? No. Well, I'm a contractor, so. Okay. So this was your personal um, vehicle then. Yeah, yeah. This is okay. my personal vehicle. Got it. Um, so I bought this vehicle off my uh, my other tech. And uh, there are some issues with the title. 
Um, it's and issues fun. with what? I'm sorry, you broke up for just a short moment there. With the title. Okay. The title. And uh, it's got a whole bunch of signatures on it and all kinds of stuff. Um, the uh, I took it over to the local exchange to get it fixed and said, I can go and get them to sign this piece of paper and here, here, and here, and no problem. Well, go do that. Bring it back. They're like, oh, yeah, we can't take it. I don't know. I'm sorry. You, you'll have to come back when that girl's team so Hello? Got a Hello, real bad you? connection here, uh, Liberty Phoenix. I know you had tried to call earlier on Skype, and that connection was dropping out. I don't know if you're using an internet-based uh, phone codec or something like that, but we're having a very difficult time hearing you. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Can, I, can you hear me? Yeah, we'll let you go for a short better? moment, but if it keeps going bad, I'm going to have to drop your call. So uh, recap that. You tried to get the title. There were some problems. Go ahead. Yeah, well, basically, to make a long story short, um, the, 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 the state said that I pretty much can't own because at all, period. Mm -hmm. So I'm a car, and they said, you know what? You just have to not get registered at all. So the state's criminal. So you're po you're prohibited from having the car on the road. You there's no point in owning it because if you can't register it or if you can't have the title in your name, then ultimately it'll be problematic for you. I see where you're coming from, Liberty yeah, so Phoenix. I, I wish we had a better connection yeah, for you absolutely. tonight. Thank you for the call. 855 450 free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Dave is in Nevada on the amp lines. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome, sir. Um, I just. I just really wanted to say I, I took a print screen of Johnny Ray in his in his uh, big mohawk, and I'm going to post that on the, the Facebook AMP page. For Excellent. Well, I'll be happy. Um, I'm, so, I'm so vain. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I wanted to talk about is I recently, uh, well, not recently, it's been going on like two years now, I was arrested for obstruction of an officer. I talked about it on the show before, uh, but I have an appeal currently going on. Um, what happened was, is the city attorney filed a motion to dismiss uh, the appeal for failure to prosecute. Basically, I guess my lawyer didn't file uh, whatever he had to file in time. He told me that it, it, it's, it shouldn't be an issue. There's court tomorrow uh, that he has to go to. I don't have to go. But he said, you know, it shouldn't be a problem. I guess he had a lot of cases and, and whatever. But just the fact that you know, the city attorney uh, felt the need to try to get my appeal dismissed um, after, you know, I went to trial. I didn't, in, in Nevada, you don't get a jury trial if you're uh, charged with a crime with under a year in jail. Mm -hmm. um, it's like that in a lot of places. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I had a, you know, I couldn't take their stupid plea, went to trial, was found guilty by the judge. And so I filed the appeal. Um, but just the fact that, okay, well, you know, we want to try to – whatever didn't get filed in time or it, it sounded like it was something minor, you know, and they usually don't do that. What my lawyer said was just that, uh, you know, they usually don't uh, have any problems, but they, you know, they, they just kind of – they filed that for whatever reason. What um, is that in the background? Is that a dog? That's <laughs> my – that's a dog. I sound like a gremlin. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. So, wait. So, <laughs> so the, the two dogs are fighting. So, I'm a little confused. So, you filed the appeal. They filed a motion to dismiss saying that your attorney has dropped the ball on the appeal? Yeah. I mean, the, the, the original appeal, because the arrest was in uh, May of 2012. So, it's been going on a couple years now. Uh, so, the appeal was filed in May of 2013. Uh, the original court date was supposed to be in December. Mm. And then that got continued. Uh, and I guess they're saying that um, the actual – I'm actually looking at the court page right now – is uh, respondent's motion to dismiss appeal for failure to prosecute appeal. And from what my lawyer said is what they, there was something that they didn't do or didn't do in time or, or something You're like that. You're saying something they, your they lawyer used. didn't do? Yeah, yeah, something that my lawyer – Okay. Didn't do in time. How much are you paying for you this know, appeal? I mean, to have an attorney take you through an appeal, it can't be cheap. No, and, and, and this is for, again, uh, uh, this one's a city court. It's a minor misdemeanor. If it was actually a gross misdemeanor, it'd be a lot more money. The appeal part of it, I believe, was 1500 plus the 300 for the uh, 
whatever they give you the transcripts. Uh, extra, extra, yes, that's what we're looking for. So you we're got an attorney doing an appeal for you for fifteen hundred dollars. That sounds like actually a pretty good deal. All things well, considered. Well, it's only because it's a minor misdemeanor. If it was a gross misdemeanor, it would probably be double that. So was least. there was that the point, or was there a point you were building up to here, Dave? No, it's just the point that I mean, even on top of that. They're, they're trying to, you know, get in the way of... Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, they're going to file a motion to dismiss. If they can get away with it, they'll uh, they'll definitely file things like that. Good luck, man. Thanks for the call tonight. It's Free Talk Live. There's more coming up. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. After this morning's police raid on Cosmopolitan Magazine's male pleasure laboratory revealed that test subjects were forced to endure horrific abuses and inhumane living conditions, Onion reporters spoke to 23-year-old Daniel Chertok, one of the numerous men exploited for the monthly magazine's studies on erotic stimulation. It was awful. It drove us wild for days on end. Once they made me lather myself with gallons of sexy bath oils and then read thousands of racy text messages until my eyesight began to blur. Then for the next 12 hours, they blasted sultry songs into my ears and made me simulate 50 crazy hot sex moves. They said I couldn't rest until they found the bliss button on my Randy regions. According to Chair Talk, test subjects were often subjected to hours of grueling experimentation at the hands of female scientists. Chertok added that many of his fellow subjects were not lucky enough to survive the excruciating treatment. This is the Onion News Network. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. The 
is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like. The toll-free number, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can send your contact request on Skype to username lrn.fm. We'll approve it. You'll be on our list at that point. It'll be easy for you to contact the show from that point forward. Again, username on L- on uh, Skype is lrn.fm. With you in the studio, it's Ian. And Johnny Ray. Say, maybe you've got some Bitcoins just burning a hole in your wallet. You want to spend them on something cool and useful for activism purposes? Freedomcam.net has a brand new dash cam. So we've been telling you about Freedomcam and their original product for quite a long time. Freedom Cam and Free Talk Live go a a ways back. They sure do. And now there's more than one Freedom Cam available at freedomcam.net. This new one, of course, has a front-facing camera, meaning that it records everything in front of the car. It also has a camera facing inside the cab, as does their previous model, which is still available. It has GPS recording, which the previous model does as well. It has a G-Force meter to record an accident. It has a password-protected SD card. That is something the original model does not have. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were asking for that feature. This has it. And it has an LCD display built right into it. Again, something else the older uh, model doesn't have that shows the video happening as it is in real time. Or it can even play back the footage there on the device. That way you don't have to pull the card out, put it in a laptop. So very, very handy features. All of these features are packed into the new model at a lower price than the older one. Now, there's still a couple things you can get in the older one, like the infrared lighting for the inside of the car. The new model doesn't have that, but again, the price is significantly lower on the newer model. Go and check them both out at freedomcam.net. They accept cash, but you can also pay with Bitcoin at freedomcam.net. Nice. Very useful product. There is a Freedom Cam in the car that I drive. So let's go uh, and continue here. Whether you want to talk about the IRS ruling on virtual currency or actually, really, we haven't scratched much of the other show prep tonight because it's been a pretty busy night on the phones. Thanks to everybody for taking part in the show. Still to come, Johnny Ray's Game of the Week. Nathan, though, is on the line via Skype. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. That's some great hair you have there, Johnny Ray. I'm glad you like it. It looks good. I like it, too. Go ahead, Nathan. So you talked about conspiracy theories and the definition of them a few times this week. I was curious, I had a question and a comment about that. How do you reconcile that definition of conspiracy with legal conspiracy theory, Uh, like tax protesters and people who talk about gold fringe flags and admiralty law and things like that? I mean, those are all conspiracy theories, right? If if the the idea of a conspiracy is that people well, who, are plotting in secret to do something devious and evil, then those would fall. Well, who under are that. the Who are the secret plotters? The, in theory, the those Department would be the people Justice? behind the legal system, the lawyers. Because it seems uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding how it works, but it. I thought these uh, legal conspiracy theories were just saying that if you know the right legal lease or you know the right procedure or you point out that it's really under admiralty law or whatever, then certain conclusions follow. And uh, I guess I didn't really see. Uh, well, no, I think okay. So there's two. I guess there's two realms here. I guess that we can separate. There's legal theories, and then there's conspiracy theories surrounding the legal system. So if if you're talking about supposed magic words that can get somebody out of something, that would be a legal theory. If you want to talk about a conspiracy theory, it would be that the lawyers have constructed this system to keep people enslaved and that it's all you know part of their plan. Oh, so something like gold-fringed flags, meaning admiralty law, wouldn't be a legal conspiracy theory in your usage? Um, that one would probably be a conspiracy theory because that would involve people that are trying to sort of pull the wool over over people's eyes, if you believe that, which I don't believe that. Oh, I guess I kind of looked at it as more, if you know these magic words, then they'll say, oh, you got us. It's really admiralty law. Well, and, I, again, there's kind of, uh, while there are two, I think, realms, they do sort of cross over to some extent. Because certainly the people propagating legal theories about admiralty law, equity law, etc., these sorts of things, uh, certainly believe that there's a conspiracy behind it, that there were you know, people in uh, the court system who have been trying to cover up this information. They also oh, okay. believe that the theories will be – that their theories about what to do in court are valid, and of course whenever you try them, uh, you find out they're not. Well, that leads me to my comment, which is I wanted to speculate on the or on the psychology of the people involved in some of these legal conspiracy theories, mainly like tax for the tax protesters. 
I ever found an old article on reason about it, and a lot of them they're, they're not really they're not principled anarcho Rothbardians or anything. I think uh, what a lot of them are motivated by is a a kind of fear to accept that saying by Lysander Spooner that you know if the Constitution had uh, has either not prevented it or else enabled this abuse of power. I, I think they're motivated because they're afraid to accept that and they want to believe on some level that there's a written law that the government officials are held accountable to. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think there are some of them that are that way. Others that just want to get the hell out of the system and they're looking for any possible method and they come across these ideas and they sound valid. I mean, they sound well-researched and it's just the problem is the government doesn't follow their own rules, either that or the research has been poor and it's, you know, it's just, they're just wrong. Yeah, what I was thinking was just that they they want to they don't want to reach that conclusion that they don't follow their own rules. They want to Definitely they want not. to cling to the notion that there are rules and they have to follow them. And if you you know say the magic words and they'll say, "Oh, you caught us. Those are really the rules." You know. Yep, I think I think that's definitely a factor when it comes to them. They they want to believe that there is still some sanity or that there ever was uh, some sort of sanity to this system. That that uh, the, one of the tenets or the maxims of law is that there's always a remedy, right? So they use the law and the ideas behind the the system in the the system of law to justify their their theories. Well, there, if there's always a remedy, we can figure out what that remedy is, and we can outline that remedy, and we can go through that process and yeah it turns out as you pointed out they don't follow their own rules so even if you've spent hours and hours and hours in doing research and you believe that you've got it down that you understand the path out of this insane system it just won't work out because they don't care bastiat said that the law was created to protect the rights of the citizens well it's come a long way then <laughs> and the it's uh, it's almost it's been turned on its head and it's used for exactly the opposite reason, Ian. Indeed. Nathan, other uh, thoughts you want to share? No, that's it. I just thought that was an interesting topic to bring up because you mentioned you always call them legal conspiracy theories. And no, I not usually. If I, if I do, then I apologize. Usually I just call them legal theories. I, oh, all I right. Think. Well, have a good night. But thanks for the call. I appreciate hearing from you at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. Let's uh, continue here. Uh, so let's see. In other news, there's the Colorado thing, which is pretty big news. Colorado Court of Appeals has ruled that residents have been con that have been convicted of marijuana possession before recreational weed was legalized may be eligible to have those decisions overturned. Well, wouldn't that be nice? That's huge if that actually happens. Now. The terminology is they may be eligible, so what are the qualifications? Well, as of January 1st, 2014, adults from Colorado are legally allowed to buy up to an ounce of marijuana under the state's con state constitution's recently passed Amendment 64, but with upwards of 9,000 marijuana possession cases being prosecuted each year before then, a huge chunk of the state's population is now left wondering how the newly enacted law impacts previously decided court rulings. So, we'll tell you more about it coming up here in moments. Does that mean they're going to be letting people out of prison? That would be pretty cool. More on the way. You take control here on Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. 
the successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything toll free at 855 453. That's 855 450. 3733. And that is the Pro XPN toll free line with you tonight. Ian here. And Johnny Ray. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You get a free pound of the best of the best coffee from Buzzbox. It's shade grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. Coffee is a very absorbing crop, which makes the organic certification that much more important. Buzzbox, it's a great company. They are not only producing great coffee, again, you can get a free pound. Just by paying the shipping cost over at coffee.freetalklive.com. But they also do something special that other coffee producers just aren't doing. And that is that they've set up a program that allows people around the world uh, in very tough places to live to buy into their co-op. And plus, Free Talk Live is uh, working to recruit a thousand Free Talk Live coffee drinking listeners to order your coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com, which will allow us and Buzzbox to finance 100 microloans. It'll help people in third world countries get out of poverty by giving them an opportunity to change their lives for the better, start their own businesses. You can get started now, get your free pound of coffee, just pay the shipping cost at coffee.freetalklive.com. You can cancel the subscription at any time you get on an auto ship program that you can adjust. So maybe you're a heavy coffee drinker or not so heavy. You can adjust the delivery frequency of your next pound of coffee over at coffee.freetalklive.com. So we're talking about uh, what's going on in Colorado. It's pretty big news that earlier this month, on March 13th, three judges of a state's appeals panel said that part of an earlier decision in a case against a Colorado woman sentenced in 2011 for marijuana possession should be vacated. In making their decision, the appellate court wrote that there could be post-conviction relief if there has been significant change in the law. 
Amendment 64, by decriminalizing the personal use or possession of one ounce or less of marijuana, meets the statutory requirement for a significant change in the law and eliminates and thus mitigates the penalties for persons convicted of engaging in such conduct, the judges opined. Spokesperson for the Colorado Attorney General John Southers has since told NPR the office will likely appeal the court's latest ruling, but if it stands, then it will set the stage for a substantial number of residents to have their convictions reversed. This... I'm sure Colorado is enjoying a lot of benefits from their legalization of marijuana. They've been enjoying a, a huge revenue stream, from what I understand, to the tax coffers. And and freeing a bunch of peaceful people and, and, and letting them get back to work would well, be... I don't know if they're freeing anybody who's currently behind bars for marijuana possession, but anyone who's caught with less than an ounce at this point is not going to be put in any jeopardy. Or if you have a three-panel appeals court looking at something that happened to you that involved marijuana, then maybe that'll... Isn't that what's going on here? Well, they made a decision in one case uh, to reverse part of a conviction for this lady. And, okay. and, of course, the attorney general is challenging that. They are appealing to this, probably to the state Supreme Court. So this has yet to really play out all the way, but it's looking good so far. Now, it doesn't affect everybody, however, according to the story at RT.com. The appeals court weighed in particularly on the case of Brandy Jessica Russell, a Colorado woman sentenced in August 2011 and served two concurrent four-year terms of supervised probation, 192 hours of community service, and a suspended sentence of 90 days in jail after being convicted of possessing a small amount of marijuana, marijuana concentrate, and methamphetamine. Attorneys for Russell filed an appeal shortly after, but it wasn't heard by the court system until after Amendment 64 went into effect on December 10th of 2012. Since then, lawmakers have allowed for the first legal recreational marijuana dispensaries in the United States to operate across Colorado, and the state is expected to reap millions of dollars in taxes from those sales by the end of the year. And because Russell's case was still up in the air at that point, the appeals court said her conviction should be tossed. Now, I presume they're, con they're tossing her marijuana convictions and keeping her methamphetamine conviction. Defendant contends that Amendment 64 should be applied retroactively and her convictions for possession of marijuana concentrate and possession of less than one ounce of marijuana should be vacated and we agree, wrote the court. So this is huge news. We will uh, keep an eye on this over time. We'll see how things go because if, if, uh, if this holds up at the Supreme Court level, that's going to be a big deal. There are going to be a lot of people who, even if they aren't currently on a sentence, could still go ahead and come back into the court system and say, hey, you convicted me of this, and then you changed the law, and so can you just go ahead and toss that out? Because it really sucks trying to get a job with a misdemeanor conviction on my record. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. So this is a big deal. Let's go to the phones and your calls and thoughts, whether it's about Colorado, cannabis, or whatever's on your mind. Whit is on the line in Arizona. Whit, you're on Free Talk Live. Thanks for taking me on, Ian. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I don't know if it was you that engaged in a false accusation against me or if it was your co-host the other night, but I should like to respond to being accused of engaging in hate speech. Okay, what was, was the accusation? I don't that? recall. Was that you that said that? I don't know what you're talking about. What was the accusation? Well, we were talking about well, us being over there, and that's why us they being us. over where? Over there, it was in the context of 9-11, and somebody talking about Osama bin Laden lost his sugar daddy and took us out, all this other stuff. That wasn't you that accused me of engaging in hate speech? I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't recall that conversation. Are you sure I was even on that show? Was it two nights ago or three? You are asking me about a conversation I don't recall, so I don't That's do the it. Sunday night I show, and I heard you called on Sunday night. Someone called in earlier tonight to tell us that. Oh, interesting. What did he have to say? Well, you can go back in the archives and listen anytime you want at freetalklive.com. Why don't you just go ahead and respond generally specific. to whatever it was that was said? Well, I was wondering, Ian, is it you that believes that uh, they hate us because we're over there, so to speak? I don't believe you know, like collective uh, really statements that. like that. I believe people are individuals. So, first of all, I'm not over there. Um, I don't know if you're over no. there, but if you are, that's your business no, and none of mine. The United mine. States of America has forces on foreign soil. And, and, and they is, a uh, again, another nondescript term that includes a lot of people. So 
I would only say that certain individuals probably hate the United States government because, yeah, they've probably, you know, had their family members and friends die at the hands of the U.S. soldiers. So, yeah, I think there are probably individuals who hate the United States government. Yeah, and probably well, there's a lot of individuals who hate the, uh, quote, citizens of the United States because we support the government. Or it's perceived of as though I don't support the government. Right. The government is like, in so many cases, it's like a millstone around our neck where we're, our democracy is all these, these, these bootlickers pulling us down the drain with them and when when you've got a real legitimate terrorist attack against you and your family dies because of U.S. policy, is uh, it's sad. When does that ever happen? Well, the, the 9/11 attack attackers, the America, the 9/11 attackers, I contend, were fighting U.S. policy of uh, stationing troops in holy places in Saudi Arabia. You believe that? Uh, you believe that? I, I, okay, I do. There, yeah. We're there by the invitation of Saudi Arabia, by the way. Whether or not Saudi citizens all agree with that or not, that's totally. You know, uh, you claim that you were a libertarian one night, Wit, and I don't really believe you. I am a libertarian, but that doesn't mean I have to agree with you, right? No, I don't really believe that you're a libertarian because the libertarians okay, that, uh, don't, that I know don't, don't, okay, don't believe in, Ian, in, Ian, uh, in aggression. Ian, all libertarians agree with each other? No, that's like certainly that's certainly not uh, certainly true that libertarians war. don't agree with one another. But most of the libertarians I know don't believe in aggression around the world. You're kind of unique in that, that way. That's why I left the Libertarian Party after the atrocity of 2001 because other libertarians made excuses like the one they just did for the atrocity for the people that were not victims. Those 19, uh, I don't even want to call them human beings. Uh, we're not victims of our aggression or terrorism in Saudi Arabia. In fact, a lot of them were what would be called it from where I grew up, rich and spoiled brats that were taught to hate by a jerk-off that had a lot of money and had a cult following. And they actually do believe that the Koran is based on a true story and that Muhammad is... Allah is God, and Muhammad is a messenger, and he commands them to kill people that don't agree with them. Thanks for now, the call, Wit. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. You can take control. Libertarians, as I understand it, don't believe in aggression, and the U.S. military going around the world and bombing people and threatening people and occupying countries is definitely perceived of as aggression by the people in those places in the same way that people in the United States would perceive it as aggression if the Chinese came and occupied our streets here and started killing people. It's Free Talk Live. You take control. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is. And it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and the truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. Good people need help. The Homeowners Association said we had weeds and fined us $25. We told them they had the wrong house. They said if we didn't pay it, they'd file a lien. Our attorney demanded photographs, witnesses, and told them if they couldn't provide this, they must cease and desist. Issue solved. Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. That's LSProtection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. 
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency, and Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, and spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Take control, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Skype us, username LRN.FM. With you tonight, Ian here. And Johnny Ray. Check out the Free State Project. Your best chance at achieving liberty in your lifetime is to go to freestateproject.org, get signed up like Johnny Ray and I did, and then make the move as we've done as well. We're early movers, though. There are 1,500-plus people that are here already as part of the Free State Project. The move's been going on for about a decade now. Actually, the early moving part has been going on for about a decade. We want to reach 20,000 people who pledged to pick up their lives and move here to New Hampshire to get active with other people who believe in freedom so we can achieve liberty in our lifetime because that's important and it's worth doing something about. And there's something that I can't really explain. There's something inexplicable, if you will, about locality and being, you know, me sitting right across the table from you and how it's important a community. That is. It builds a community that's that is it's hard to explain to other people how great it is to be around other people who understand freedom. Go and check out freestateproject.org. Come visit us and uh, about 1,500 other liberty-minded people at the upcoming Porcupine Freedom Festival, porkfest.com. You can go there to learn more about that event. It's happening in June. We're about three months away, actually, at this point from the Porcupine Freedom Festival, which is a great excuse to come check out New Hampshire and check out that community because it is amazing. Go to freestateproject.org to learn more as we go to the phones and your calls and thoughts. Let's go to... Charles in West Virginia, you're listening to WVTS. Hey, Charles. Hi, guys. Hey, How's it's... it going? Hey, great. What's great. on your mind tonight? Uh, I was just wondering, uh, since the guys that attacked us for, from Saudi Arabia, how come we invaded Iraq? Well, first of all, I didn't invade Iraq. I don't know if you did, but... Uh, our, our military did. You mean the no, military. Another... Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, maybe it was really all about oil and control. Well, that's a that's a theory I've kind of mulled over. That's what uh, I got for you. What about you, Johnny Ray? What do you think? Why invade Iraq if uh, the hijackers were from Saudi Arabia? The family feud between the Bushes and the and the uh, yes, Husseins, settling old scores, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, and and the oil. Hey, uh, Saddam Hussein threatened to kill Bush the first, so Bush the second. <laughs> took up a chance and took it. Settle some old scores. Yeah, we'll never know how much personalities drive these world events, but I suspect it has a lot to do with it. Charles, thanks for your call and the thoughts tonight. Yeah. Appreciate it. Let's go to Billy. He's in also in West Virginia listening to WVTS. Hey, Billy. 
Hey, how are you guys tonight? Welcome, sir. Go ahead with your thoughts. Um, so I wanted to kick back to what you guys are talking about and everyone being kind of up in arms about uh, overturning some convictions in Colorado. Um, I think what, you're, what you see when you look at that is a lot of people who uh, don't want to bog down the legal system and are still fighting to um, handle issues that have been nullified. So the people that are looking for overturns are people who were fighting the legal system while the legalization battle was going. Um, but I also don't understand or, or I don't really get why they're raising such a big deal about these overturns. Um, because when you look at issues like marriage equality, um, especially Prop 8 in California, the number of people whose lives were changed because a law was changed and it retroactively affected them. I mean, this is, this is kind of a commonplace thing in a world where we're expecting a lot of social change now, um, where we saw people who were married, who all of a sudden were not legally recognized as being married, who then again are legally recognized as being married. So the law changes and people kind of have to deal with that. <laughs> are you saying, and let me see if I'm, maybe I'm misunderstanding you. Are you saying you don't understand why people are interested in having their convictions overturned? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I'm sorry. I think it's a really great thing. Um, but I just don't understand why some people in Colorado and are making such a big deal over the fact that, oh, these people who are convicted are all of a sudden going to be free to get jobs and exist in the general public when you look at all the other issues that are going on in the country right now. And as soon as a law gets changed, it tends to affect a large number of people at one time. Um, and using marriage equality as an example, uh, I'm in West Virginia now, but I live in California primarily. And I, you know, the number of, of couples who were married before, um, before same-sex marriages were illegalized in California, so then they weren't legally recognized, and then they overturned it, so they were legally married again. You know, it's, it's you're saying people are. I, I guess I'm still confused, Johnny Ray. Maybe you can help me out here if you've been following this better. I was um, thinking about video games. <laughs> um, are, are what you are, who is getting upset, or who's? What are the people in Colorado that you're referring to? Are you saying people are mad that people are getting their convictions overturned? I just don't understand why it's such a big deal. <laughs> why? Why? Well, it's, it's a big deal if you're somebody who's got a conviction on your record and you can get that expunged. That's a big deal. Right. Which is good. I'm I'm saying it's a good thing. So why are people making? making waves about it. Which people are you referring to? Hello? He just dropped off the line. I don't know what happened there, if it was a bad... I, I guess he means that maybe he thinks people who don't support medical or who don't support legalization are making waves. I, I wasn't really clear on who he was, who those people would be, because if you have a conviction, then obviously you want to have your conviction overturned because it can be a real pain in the butt to try to get a job. If you've been like, for instance, in, in Florida, it used to be a possession of over 21 grams of pot would have been a felony. So I don't know what it was in Colorado previously. Maybe it was just a misdemeanor, but either way, getting a job with that kind of record is very, very difficult. So I would understand that that would be a big deal for people, unless he was talking about is it a big deal for the people who oppose marijuana, who want to make it criminal, in which case I haven't heard from those people, so I don't know if it's a big deal to them or not. Certainly the attorney general is going to make it out to be a big deal because they're going to have to overturn a lot of cases if this decision goes through. Maybe he was um, thinking that there was a component to the story you were sharing where there was another side to it. The only other side that was cited in the story was the attorney general's office. They're the ones that are appealing. They're the ones that don't want people's convictions overturned because that means more work for them, I think. Are they making a big deal out of it? They're appealing. I guess that's the big the deal. The attorney general's office? Yeah, they're appealing the decision of overturning Well, why are they making a big deal out of it? <laughs> I don't know if it's a big deal. If you want to consider it a big deal, they filed appeals paperwork. Anyway, Johnny Ray, let's talk about your game of the week. Sure. It's uh, it's from Blizzard. It's uh, This is a real crowd pleaser. It's called Hearthstone, and it's a card game. It's on, I'm playing it on Battle.net. Battle so it's an Net. online card game. Yes. Doesn't that take the fun out of card games? Well, why? 
They're oh, because really, you're not holding them. Yeah, they're not and real stuff. cards. Well, Ian, you remember how much fun we used to have playing Dominion, yeah. right? Well, the online I've experience way better was online. so much better. Yeah, because you're because everything's done for you. Well, yeah, you don't have to remember all the rules, and if there's right? mis- you don't miss make mistakes yep. on the rules. You don't make mistakes on the rules. You don't have to shuffle your deck every time you play through yeah. it. And but it takes the human element out of it. Well, no, it does not take the human element out yeah, of it. Yeah, it you're does. Stupid. You're disconnected <laughs> unless you're sitting in the same room as the people. Who are playing the game. You, you are totally disgust disconnected. me, you <laughs> Luddite. All right, so what do you do in this game? Uh, well, it's kind of like that game that I was talking Stone? about. Yeah, it's called Hearthstone. Like, uh, you know, okay. your hearth. Yep. Um, and it was kind of like that uh, Adventure Time game I was talking about, Card Wars. It's got that similar, I'm assuming it's a Magic the Gathering um, um, style, a Magic the Gathering conceit. You put your little minions out in front of you, and they serve. They can serve to protect you. It's you. When you die, you're you know behind your minions, and you've got like 25 hit points or whatever. Mm-hmm. And somebody's throwing minions out on their side of the board, and their minions can attack you, and they're casting spells and stuff. What is uh, I think new with this game is you gotta you gotta play. You gotta spend mana to put out one of your minions you know a more powerful minion and then it's going to cost you more mana yeah that but sounds very magic the gathering every turn you always know it's a prescribed how much mana you're going to have to spend on your first yeah. turn you have one mana to spend on your second turn you'll have two mana on your third turn you'll have three mana so when you get to the end of the game the game kind of accelerates because every turn you've got mana plus one uh-huh. and and it's not you know too long while you're into it that the that the the you start really pulling some powerful cards out the games are fast and it's kind of like How bas- fast for me i was a slow player i just learned it today mm-hmm. so the games were taking 20 to 25 minutes that's pretty fast because like you're used to games that go on for an hour and a half or something like that yeah dominion was my favorite and yeah. it was uh on average an hour, hour. uh but um this game How many players Two players. Okay. As far as I know, it's only two players. And um, uh, shucks, I forgot what I was going to say. But it's, So have uh, you it's played Magic the Gathering? Like 15 years ago. Okay. Once. Because it sounds kind of, it sounds pretty similar, although I'm sure there's key differences that I, you know, we're not going to be able to really uh, unearth here in the next 20 seconds. <laughs> well, it's kind of like basketball because each, each turn, like I've got all these minions out and I'm really happy. And this guy, he's got all... He wipes them all out, and it's just back and forth and back and forth, and then it's over. So you've only been playing it for a day, right? But I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to come do free talk live because I wanted to keep playing. Oh damn, it's that good. All right. Well, I'm glad you showed up tonight, Johnny Riggs. Thank it's been you. a good show with you, and uh, so maybe we'll get a follow up next week with some more detail on on your a week long experience. Yeah, and this you game. can find me on BattleNet Chisharim C I S H A U R I M. You're gonna have to spell that again next week. We'll see you tomorrow, freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, March 25th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.07 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,312 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $575. The Associated Press reports on Monday, an Egyptian court sentenced to death nearly 530 suspected backers of ousted President Mohamed Morsi over a deadly attack on a police station, capping a swift two-day mass trial in which defense attorneys were not allowed to present their case. Amnesty International said it was the largest single batch of death sentences in the world in recent years. The U.S. State Department said that it defies logic that so many people could get a fair trial in just two sessions. The verdicts by a court in the city of Minya are subject to appeal and are likely to be overturned. But the outcome stunned human rights activists and raised fears that the rule of law is being swept away in the crackdown waged by the military-backed interim government against Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood since his overthrow last summer. The 545 defendants were charged with murder, attempted murder, joining an outlawed group aiming at toppling the regime, and stealing government weapons in connection with the attack last August in the town of Matei, south of Cairo. The town's deputy police chief, Mohammed al Attar, was killed in the violence. The state news agency and judicial officials said 528 defendants were found guilty and handed death sentences while the rest were acquitted. All but around 150 of the defendants were tried in absentia and will get retrials if captured. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, Ukraine's interim president, Alexander Turchinov, has ordered a full military withdrawal from Crimea. The Ukrainian military has been ordering pullouts for much of the peninsula since Friday, but a few bases had stragglers who claimed they never got the orders. Those bases were quickly consolidated.